try to understand the advanced TypeScript compilation. So how the compilation works in detail. We have seen in initial one of the module, like how the basic TypeScript compilation works. There are different flags and configurations are given, which defines and uh, mention how the compilation behavior should work. But there are many more options in the TypeScript compilation. That's the reason we have kept a separate module to understand this. And intentionally we have kept this advanced TypeScript compilation module uh, somewhere around end of our course in the last few modules because you should be much more confident with the TypeScript, how it works, how the object oriented in TypeScript work, how the different uh, uh, data types, object, classes and the union types, null, all this parameter works because after understanding that only you can understand these advanced compilation options. So now it's good time to just play around this configuration and while playing around this co configuration you will get to know how you can make a compiler more strict at few places for few uh, compilation option and where to keep it early uh, a little bit more lightweight and give a flexibility for the compilation process and uh, in which version of the javascript it should get compiled and all other options so let's deep dive into the this module and understand TypeScript compilation advanced options. So here is a tsconfig.json ts file in which our TypeScript related configuration is there, our project related configuration. So what is this file is indicating? Very first thing, this file is indicating in whatever the file uh, folder it is present. So this is your TypeScript project root folder. And from here, your TypeScript project start. So it's always present in the root folder of your TypeScript project, the tsconfig file. And uh, what are the things you are able to see the different properties inside this configuration file might differ a little bit based upon the compiler version, the TypeScript compiler version you people are using the, or maybe I'm using or maybe any other person is using. So there might be a little bit changes here and there. So don't worry about that. If you figure out any particular differences, you can just Google it out or just go to the official documentation of the TypeScript uh, website where you can just see what exactly it means. But mostly it will be same. You might figure out a little bit changes due to the new updates that might occur time to time. So very first thing it is showing here, there is some important property here, compiler options. So it defines all the possible options for compile, compiler, TypeScript compiler, which are required. So it is divided into some set of uh, other categories here. You know, all these properties, let's say this is a projects one, it's defining how the project compilation should work. It is an incremental or composite and many more things related to the project uh, on the project level. After that, it is also defining in which language and the environment the compilation should perform. If uh, the compilation is success, then in which particular JavaScript target version it should get compiled and the JavaScript output should come in which language here, what are the libraries should be used over here for this. Then also the modules, which are the modules should be considered, which are the files should be considered for the compilation, which are the files need to be excluded for the compilation. It also asks you if you have the configuration regarding the JavaScript support should be given here or it should not be given. So these are all the advanced options. Of course, it's not necessary to go into each and every option in detail, but just we are just looking at a summary here. There is one more main category that is image. So this is specifying here how the JavaScript file should get created out of it or maybe how the different other files like the mapping file or maybe any other files should get created out of uh, our TypeScript file when the conversion is happening to the JavaScript and in which way this conversion should happen. So the next is uh, you can just ignore that this is one of the advanced option not necessary in our project case. Then the type checking. This is one of the very important one. So when your compilation is happening, so how the compilation should happen? It should be in a very strict mode. And if it is in a strict mode, there are different options with respect to what it should be very strict with respect to the null, with respect to the fun function type, with respect to the this keyword, with respect to the local variables uh, usage or they are not using it and many more options. We are going to see these all uh, configuration maximum all configuration will try to see in this particular module and the last one is completeness so how the project uh, overall compilation is happening there are also few configurations are there at the end for that 
So whenever you use the TypeScript in any other framework, so this particular TS config file will be auto generated for you. In most of the 99% cases, you do not need to change a single line here, but you should be knowing if any changes are needed in the TS config file, how you should change. And if you change that, what will be the effects of it? And that's all we are going to see in this particular module. So let's start with a couple of options here in the next lecture. We'll start here with the first property that is target. So what exactly this target is specifying us? It is saying that in which particular JavaScript version the imitate files should go. So in which particular version it should suit for the, in the JavaScript. So it is by default using ES5 for me. Maybe for you it will be ES6 based upon the version of the TypeScript that you are using. So by default it targets to what JavaScript version for the automatic conversion. Of course, it is not necessary for us to look into it in detail, but maybe while using few of the options, you might need to change this JavaScript conversion in that. So let's try to write a small code here and understand. So I'm just writing a class here and a class, for example, employee. And just for the sake of understanding here, I'm just mentioning employee name, which is of string and equals to just NA I'm mentioning here because I didn't want to make this particular class complicated. We just want to see the conversion in the JavaScript. So that's it, I'm saving it. It's a ES5 version and let me open the JavaScript file here. So it is giving something called here, the strict for uh, the use strict option. Then instead of class here, it is using some variable here, then the function inside it and a weird syntax it is using here. It is not using a class. So let's go here in the TS config.json and instead of ES5, let me just do the ES6 here and save the file. And now let me open the JavaScript file here. So now this time I'm able to see the class and the constructor in my JavaScript. So what's happening here? So what's the difference between ES5 and the ES6 version of the JavaScript? So for that, let me just navigate you to the JavaScript versions. So it was it, it was pointing to the ECMS script 5 and in which uh, these new things are added. And then later I have targeted it to ES6 version, which is called the next generation JavaScript. And here the, uh, the JavaScript started introducing the classes and all these options. And that's the reason when uh, we are targeting to ES6, the output code, the imitate code is having the classes and everything. And previously it was having the var and all those options here. Along with that, the, in the ES6 version, it is also saying that it started using let and constant keyword. So let's try to also see that. So let me just write here let uh, e1 equals to, let's say the employee one object here and with an empty constructor new. Okay, so all looks good here. Let's see our JavaScript code. That's perfect. Here also on line number seven, this even object is represented and declared with the let keyword. That sounds perfect. Let's go back to the JSON again and make it ES5. And this time let's see the JavaScript code. So instead of let it become var again, because the let and the constant support is provided from ES6 version onwards. And right now we are pointing to the ES5. So hope you understood how the uh, target will work and when to make it ES5, ES6, or maybe beyond that also things are available like ES, all these things are available. But for now, just the sake of understanding, I'm just using ES5 here. Fine, we'll see the next option in the next lecture. Let's try to create a good project structure, a good maintainable and readable project structure with the TypeScript project here. And for that, we have the two configurations available to properties inside our tsconfig.json. So there is something called as root directory, which will help us to put all the source code inside one particular directory. And there is one more configuration available that is out directory, the output directory, where we can mention where should be all the compiled output JavaScript file should go. So it will help us to write the code in a separate folder and we can keep seeing the output, the JavaScript files, which we generally don't much bother about it while writing the code to keep it in a separate output folder. So let me uncomment this here and mention, we are going to keep everything inside a source folder here. 
So as soon as I'm doing here, and let me just also right click here and apply the pre tier. And if you're applying the pre tier first type on the JSON file, it will ask you to configure the default formatter for the JSON. For me, it's already done. So it's not asking me to configure it. So for me, the script, the formatting is happening automatically. And it's good to have the formatting for this because if you miss by mistakenly any particular commas and everything, it will immediately highlight you. Let's see here I'm giving some multiple commas and just trying to right click and format document. So it will immediately start complaining me there are some issues you made. So that's the reason applying pre tier here as well is very necessary. Okay, so we need to create a source folder here. And as soon as I'm doing this, I started getting some error in my TS config because we don't have any source folder and uh, our project is not getting any files to compile. So let's quickly create a source folder, SC, SRC. It makes sure it should be inside our root project. As soon as we are doing that, uh, still our JavaScript is complaining like uh, uh, the, some issues are there and something. Why it is saying that? Because our TypeScript files still, still are outside of our uh, SRC folder. So let's quickly move this particular TypeScript file, which are completely empty right now, script.ts and the validation.ts. So let's move it inside the source folder. Make sure I'm moving the TS file. So as soon as I'm moving the TS file, I'm also getting automatically the compiled JavaScript files because whenever the file changes are happening, this particular watch mode is getting activated and the compilation is happening in background. So here we don't need the JavaScript files on the root uh, project. So let's delete this JavaScript file and this JavaScript file. Okay, so now we are ready with our compilation where the source, all the TypeScript code are available inside this particular source folder. But there is one more problem now. The output JavaScript files are also coming over here. It should not be done because it's a source folder. All the TypeScript should only be here. And we want to put all these output JavaScript files should go into another separate output folder. So for that, let's go to next configuration. So we should go inside this particular category called emit, how the emit emission should happen here. So there is something called as out directory. So generally all the out directory inside uh, any project will be mentioned with the dist folder, which is called as distribution. So we'll also maintain the same format and let's right click and the format document. Okay. So as soon as we are doing that and saving our file, you can see here, we are able to see both the script.js and the validation.js are ready here. So with this, what I can do here, I can delete this script.json from here. I can delete validation.json from here. And now if any changes I'm doing here, let's say script, I'm just writing a quick class here, class employee. I'll just write a quick one. which is of string by default value I'm providing instead of constructor and all, that's it. So let's go to our disk folder. We should be able to see our JavaScript compiled file here. So here we go. So this is how we have set up a source folder where we are keeping all the TypeScript file and when separate disk folder where we are keeping all the JavaScript output file. So in this way for a developer, it will be much more simplified to just work inside the source folder and the person who is deploying your application, who is taking care of the deployment, he just need to go inside this particular distribution folder and handle the things accordingly. Let's talk about the next configuration, declaration and declaration map. So in the TS config JSON file, there is, inside the image category, there is something called as declaration. So when we are turning it on, let's observe what is happening. So in the distribution folder, we are just having the script.js file. It means the JavaScript file. And when I am turning it on and saving this file. So along with that, it is also generating the d.ts file, script.d.ts file. So this d stands for declaration.ts file. So what is this declaration file? Let's try to open it and look into it. So it is having a declaration and the details about the class that we have created. So to understand more better, let's go to the TS file here. So yes, there is a class and about this class declaration, there is some information given here. It's looking a bit confusing. 
let's clear it with an example the script.ds uh, d.ts file declaration file is used to give information about all the data types all the declarations that is done in your typescript file because you will lose the data type related information when it is getting converted to the javascript yes so let's understand here with an example so uh, what's the data type we are using here like the class name we are using the employee okay and for the employee name we are using a string here if you go to the javascript file and see here for employee name you are using a string that is not mentioned here directly the value is given and that's what the behavior of javascript so if i just change here to one two three so javascript won't tell you anything so what are the declaration what are the data types we have given for this particular job uh, variable inside our ty typescript file that we lost of course it is not necessary because it is directly compiled by the browser but when it will be necessary uh, if you are exposing your apis or when you are exposing your uh, 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 TypeScript or the JavaScript code or as a library to any other programmers or maybe in other libraries. So they people need this information because they are also developers, right? They need to know it's a string and everything. Along with that, uh, if I go to here, TS file and also mention, let's say console dot hello. And if I just save my file and then go to the d.ts file, I'll not see anything about this console because it is just holding the declaration part of all the things that you're putting inside the ts file so to understand it in more detail also try a few more examples so i'm saying a integer equals to 10. let's save this and open the d.ts file so you can see here it is very clearly mentioning the variable a is having a number data type a primitive number data type even what exactly the value inside this that doesn't matter inside your declaration file what matters what are the variables and classes and everything you are using what is the data type for that that is what is needed inside your declaration file and this information will be very helpful to the other developer when you are giving your typescript code when you are giving your javascript code as a library to them to start using or maybe for further development or more facilities on top of this there is one more interesting option here if I go to this particular script.d.ts uh, file here and I want to see, okay, fine, it's an employee uh, class. I want to see what, uh, like how exactly in detail it is uh, declared and everything. I want to see the original ts file. So generally what we do, we just do the right click and just say, go to the documentation. So let's do that. It is not navigating me anywhere. Let's again try to do it. No, it means that our declaration file lost a reference. It's very clear, uh, means, uh, uh, carefully listen this, our declaration file lost the reference from where it came. That's the reason when I'm right clicking here and saying go to the definition, it is not able to identify where should I go and show the definition of employee. So it should go here and it should show us this class file, right? So generally, uh, like uh, anywhere if you just like say even equals to new employee, so if you're just doing a right click here and saying go to definition, it will immediately navigate us here like this, wherever the definition is given. But the same is not in the case here. So how to uh, means maintain the link between our original TS file and the declaration file. So for that, something called a configuration is available that is declaration map. So if you open the TS config JS file, there is something called as declaration map. As soon as I'm saving this file, it is giving a new file here that is script.d.ts.map, declaration ts mapping file. And after this particular, uh, so this file contains some weird things that we do not need to bother much about. And uh, now if you go to the script declaration file here and go to this employee and just right click and mention go to definition, now it should navigate to your original ts file. Yes. So now is it, uh, it is able to identify because this knows now from where this particular map uh, declaration is coming. And at the end, it is also showing you which particular mapping happening and all for this. Of course, it's a very advanced options. You don't need to be much worried about this. You don't need to be changing in your project, but it is better to know about it.
Let's understand the new configuration here that is remove comments. Of course, it's not much necessary, but just to uh, better to know about it. So there is some configuration called remove comments here. Uh, so generally, whatever the in TS file we are mentioning a comments here. Let's say for example, this is a class, right? So I'll mention it. Uh, this is a class definition. Definition. Okay, and uh, here I'm saying, and here I'm giving the multi-line comment because above one is a single line comment, and here I'll say this is a uh, object. Object of employee class okay and now if i go to my javascript file here so i can also see these comments and everything but when you talk about the most uh like uh efficient uh, conver uh conversion of the typescript code to the javascript where there's a very large file and you want to uh, deploy it to the production so of course in production these uh comments are not necessary it is for the development requirement so when you are pushing your code for the production server and everything so these comments are not necessary to unwantedly increase the length of your files so what we can do, there is a configuration for that, something called as remove comments. So we just need to turn it on here. And now if you just, even, even though there are two comments, well, single line comment and here is a multi-line comment. And if you go to the JavaScript file, you can see there are no comments. So here is a simple configuration, remove comments. What is the use of no image? So no image simply means that uh, we don't want to generate the uh, distribution folder here in this case, or maybe we don't want to uh, convert our TypeScript code to the JavaScript. So we just want to perform the compilation, but we don't want to emit those things into the JavaScript when it will be necessary. So the requirement for this is in the time of development. So day to day, uh, when we are doing a development for a large application in which consists of thousands of files in that and everything. So there, when whenever we are changing a single line of code, let's say complete compilation is happening, then the distribution folder is getting created. All those files are getting again created and overridden there. So it might create a bit complexity in that. Again, if you are using GitHub and everything for a Git, uh, 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 a repository so it will give you many files then you need to put into the git ignore so many things will comes into picture so in the development the distribution folder is not necessary the output is not necessary you just need to write and focus on your typescript file so in that case this no emit will be useful and when you are deploying your application you can just turn on this configuration uh, you can just make it this off so your, the emit will happen and you can see all of your javascript uh, output whenever the complete project is done so let's try to do it right now we are able to see the all the javascript output and everything it means the emit is happening for us so if you want to uh, remove that let's turn on no emit flag here and uh, let's delete the distribution folder okay and now inside my typescript i'll just say hello to and save so here it is saying that no errors and everything, but still the distribution folder is not getting generated. The types, uh, the JavaScript code is not getting generated due to the flag. Let's turn it on again, or maybe let's make it false, no emit. So this time it is getting generated. So it is a simple option called no emit. One more similar configuration uh, like no emit, no emit on error. So it is also similar to the no emit as the name suggests. It is it only won't emit the JavaScript files when there is at least one single error in your code of TypeScript. When there are zero errors in your TypeScript complete project, then only will the emit will happen. So let's see how it works. So very first thing, let me just simplify our TypeScript code here, and let me say your EMP one equals to I want, just want to create a new object of employee everything is good we are also able to see the javascript code everything looks fine here uh, but and let me just delete this distribution folder okay and let's make it employee v2 for while creating a new object let's say by mistake i'm giving or whatever it could be uh, so we are having some issues and errors in our typescript code here and uh, my question here is, I'll just take a pause so that you can think on it. So if I save this particular file now, uh, so of course the compiler will give you the error, but the JavaScript files will be created or will not be created that you should decide. 
and here remember how the javascript work what's an ideology of javascript working and typescript working so that you will be near to your answer so i'll just take a pause for a minute hope you got the answer so let me just save this and see very first thing my compiler started complaining there is one issue there is one error of course we know what is that error that employee 2 is not being defined or whatever it could be okay but with that it is very important to see the distribution folder got created and in that i'm getting all the javascript code even though this code is having some errors it is not a good code still the output got created and inside the javascript code also the employee v2 is there an employee v2 class also we are not having inside the javascript of course we are not having in the typescript so it's not a good behavior to do this uh, so for this behavior to restrict the distribution file creation or maybe the javascript file creation when at least a single error in your project is there so for that there is a configuration no emit on error so let's make it true and uh, let it be this error in this file we need to delete the distribution folder delete okay let's try to save now okay so we are getting the error as usual but the uh, distribution folder is not getting created so let's try to remove the error and save yes so as soon as there are zero errors in your application the distribution folder will be created Let's understand a new type checking related property called no implicit any. Before that, there is something called as strict property as well. So what is this? So it is saying that there are many properties and configurations are available, how the compilation should happen, how the type strict manner it should happen with respect to implicit any, with respect to null, with respect to function parameter, this keyword and many more similar to this. So if you just want to turn on all this, so instead of usually getting turn on, there is a single one called strict equals to true. So if you do that, all these options you can consider are by default turned on you can also manually turn on and off remaining all as per the need and in this particular lecture we are going to do that with no implicit any before that i would like to also highlight when you are saying that strict equal to true so if you just go to the distribution file and in this javascript file here the very first line will also come up with use strict so use strict is a uh, is a feature added in the javascript uh, uh, where it ensure your javascript code will work in a more type strict fashion of course like uh, it won't have that much bigger functionality but almost things it will cover so let's start with this no implicit any here in this particular ts file let's say i'm creating a function and i'm saying add so I just want to add two numbers, n1 and n2 here. And uh, I just want to return n1 plus, or I just want to console n1 plus n2. So as soon as I'm doing this, it is not allowing me. And what's the error? Let's try to understand. So it is saying that parameter n1 implicitly has an any type. So it is not allowed. You have to either mention here any, or maybe anything else that you need. So, but by default, the TypeScript implicitly not able to decide what to do. Generally, it happens. For example, if you are mentioning here n2 equals to 10. So here TypeScript is able to decide, okay, fine, n2 is an integer. And here the data type number that TypeScript can add automatically. And that's what we call as implicit data type assignment by the TypeScript. But in our case now, we are just saying n1 and n2. So TypeScript is confused. What should I consider here? I should consider integer, string, or any. By default, any is considered, but there is some configuration in the TS config that is no implicit any. So you are in a strict mode. So what you need to do, you just need to turn off this configuration. So when you are doing that, the by default, the TypeScript can consider this n1 as an implicit one. So you can of course mention it explicitly like this, but if you want TypeScript to consider it explicitly like any here, so you can just turn on this configuration. But it, it is very risky and it is not a data, uh, uh, data type uh, safe manner. So we should not be doing that. It's just an option available. And if you are just turning it on, so we are almost, uh, what we can say, we are almost like uh, 
using the JavaScript. In JavaScript also, we do the same thing. We don't mention the data types for this. And there are many problems comes when you don't define what data types for the variables or parameters are there. So it's better to keep it always true. So let's see, we should get the errors here. Yes, we are getting the errors and that's an expected behavior. The next configuration is strict null checks. So what's the use of it? Let's see with an example. Uh, let's consider uh, we are holding a variable called uh, city and uh, it's of type string. And I'm just mentioning here, otherwise I'll not mention the data type here first of all. And I'll mention the city name here. And I want to console the length of it. Okay, so that's everything is fine. It will give whatever the length for this particular city name is. The problem here is when I'm saying city equals to null. As soon as I'm doing here, it is saying that it's a string. You can't assign a null. That's perfect. I can understand if that's your problem. Then what we can do to just solve this problem coming at line number three, we can say, okay, fine. It can have a string or it can have a null. As soon as we are doing this, what we are saying inside this variable, either a string can come or a null can come. So both a string is possible here or the null is also possible. Any one of out of it, you can assign. But the problem comes on the line number five. When there is a null, so we cannot say null dot length. So it will crash our program. When there is a city name and you're saying a length, then it's a valid choice and you'll get a length out of it. But when there is a null, it will crash your program. So here the TypeScript is giving you an extra check for the null uh, for the null null here. So you cannot make null dot length. And if you hover your cursor, it is very clearly saying CT is possibly a null. So that will crash your program because you are saying dot length. So for that, if you just go to the JSON file here, so that is happening due to this is set to true by default. So if you make it false, you don't want to strictly check the null here. So you can just turn it off and come back to your TypeScript file. So it will even allow you. But what will happen if you just go to the outcome here and see it will crash your program. So the program is crashing due to some other issues here. Let me just figure it out. Yeah, the program is crashing here because uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll leave up to you people like what's the issue we are getting here. I'll just take a pause so that you can think on it. So it is saying script.js is not found. I'll just take a pause, think on it and just trouble, try to troubleshoot. Okay, so the reason is, uh, if you clearly see it is saying that the script.js which is present inside this folder is not present. So of course, previously our script file was outside of this particular source file. Now it is inside this source folder here. So we have to update the address of our script file and the validation.js file inside this HTML. So inside this HTML here, we need to mention now we are inside the script folder, oh, sorry, the source folder. Okay, and the last one is not necessary. That was just a testing part. Let's leave it. Okay, now we should get the output. Still, we are getting the issue here. What could be the reason? Yeah, of course, the, the we, we are pointing out to the JavaScript, right? So we should point to the distribution folder, not the source one, because this is something like a output is happening here. Very correct. And we are getting an error here that null cannot have a length. Line number four, script.js from the JS file, it is giving us error. So, and when, when we are not providing a null, so we should get a correct outcome. But when there is a null, we'll have a problem. And that's the reason keeping this particular true is important. So I'll just keep commenting these functionalities so that it will not look complex. Let's talk about the strict function types, how it works. So let's understand with a quick example here. The strict function types are generally we use functions or maybe the arrow functions in advanced libraries or maybe other very complex functionalities. We need to pass one function to another function as a parameter and all. So while doing that, 
the data types of functions like what are the parameters given as an input what are it returns as an output what is the return data type and everything if you want to cross check in much detail so these things are necessary so you need to turn on strict function type by default it's turned on here because we are in the strict mode so you can also turn it off and see the effects of it so let's quickly try an example here uh, i'm just defining a type allies here called display string or i'll say number function so this is just a name of my uh, uh type allies i'm giving for the function and the function should be like this there should be some parameter here and which is of type number or the string and the output the output means the written type of this particular function should be void so it's super simple functionality so we are defining a type allies here and mentioning how the function should be there should be one parameter which is a union one that is string or the number but there is only one parameter and the written type of your function should be void so let's try to practically create this type of function the name we can give anything i'm giving the name here called display string and i'm saying i'll give you one parameter called value with the uh, data type of string and i'm not going to return anything out of this function so return type is void and the functionality is just to console that's it so this is just a type ally so it doesn't matter what exactly you are doing inside the function it matters what is the input of your function what data type and what is the output of your function okay so i'm creating one uh variable here which holds the function and the data type of that i want to use this allies and i'm mentioning this display string i'm assigning over here so as soon as I'm doing that, it is started complaining. What it is saying that the very first thing I'm saying, I just want to hold one variable which should be capable to hold a function, which is of type. The function type will be this one, which will uh, for which the one there will be one parameter of this type, and there will be no output as a for that particular function as a written type. So here is also a similar function which have some one input and it won't return anything. The name doesn't matter here. But the only problem here is that this input is having only string. And our type ally says that your function input should be mentioned in this way. The data type of that. It should be mentioned with union of number. So you have to define here in this way. Now it will not start complaining you. Because it's a strict uh, function type checking here so if it is saying that you must have one input then there is only one along with that whatever the type it is mentioning you must follow that tab uh, that type then only you can assign it to that particular type allies of function and if you just want to uh, uh, reduce the strict strictness of type check function type checking here you just come here and mention it as false so it will allow you there is no problem but as soon as you make it true that's a default one so it will start complaining so this is an expected behavior here we can say so let me just comment out this functionality so that when you will download the code you can experience that issue strict bind call apply let's see how this configuration works and what's the use of it so very first thing we can bind a call with a particular function and call it separately we'll see that and let's see how this configuration is applicable there so we have some display string here so generally we call this display string in this way and we'll just say hello and leave it and we can see the output okay that's perfect but there is one more way to call this function when there is a requirement to pass the current this object as a parameter to the display function or whatever the function you are calling and that is called something like a binding of uh, the current this uh, object to the corresponding function it's an advanced programming uh, will be uh, used when you're writing the complex thing of course it's not necessary here to go in detail about that i'll just go with a quick syntax so that no confusions will be there so display string uh, string i can just say dot call 
okay so when i'm doing that immediately i need to mention this argument here it means i need to pass the current object i don't have any current object with respect to i need to call this functionality or whatever it could be so i'm just passing null here for now and then all the parameter here we can start mentioning let's say hello so this is an equivalent call we made on the line number seven and the line number eight both are completely equal you can completely ignore this part for now let's see the outcome okay so this is just a value you are giving let's say you are giving value one and value two that is also of type string so value one value two okay so immediately started complaining you like uh, need one more parameter need to be added here so i just want to say here like you can just ignore this null rest all you can pass like a normal parameters generally you do in this traditional thing and now here the problem is i'm just passing high as a second also that's perfectly okay because both are the string but let's say by mistakely here or intentionally i'm just trying a string here so uh, a number here it is not allowing me but it will allow you there is some configuration for that ideally it should not allow uh, because it's not a good idea it is expecting a string and you are giving a number to it so of course it should not allow and it will give you the appropriate error but if you want to allow this behavior in certain case there are some certain cases for you so this configuration will help you so right now it's true you can just make it false and come back here and see so it's an allowed now and if you just execute the functionality it will work in this case because it's not something any data loss is happening in this case here let's make it again true you should start getting the error here uh, sorry in the ds file yes so i'm just commenting this functionality so that you can see in the downloaded code strict property initialization so we have faced this particular problem a lot of time while creating the bank account class the student bank account class and the employee class and you can relate this scenario now so let's go to this ts file and a quickly a simple employee class i'm creating here declaring and just trying to say employee name here as a string and here we go so we were getting this particular problem a lot of time here that it was saying like there is no initialize initializer is present or for this particular property so what we used to use to do either we used to add some na here so that some initialization will happen for this or we used to write some constructor in which uh, we we used to get some parameter and then we used to say this dot employee name equals to this employee name and then happily we will be we, we, we were creating the employee objects and using it okay all good so if i don't do this particular constructor or something or initialization so it is not allowing me because the it is saying that the, the, the initialization is compulsory and this is due to this flag the strict property initialization equals to true so by default it's true here due to this strictness here so if you want to avoid this you can just make it false so let's uncomment this and make it false so it will not give you any error here and this is also not necessary because we are not writing a constructor so the default constructor is getting created but this will create some unexpected behavior in your application let's say i'm trying to log employee one dot name okay and let's see the output so it is giving undefined so it's pretty uh like uh like uncommon and it's not good to see employee name as an undefined here where you are successfully creating an object and everything and that's the reason these initialization everything are made compulsory with this flag so inside a strict mode by default it's true and that's a good idea to keep it true let's uncomment this once and okay fine so i'll stop the code here itself so can you can also experience this problem when you'll download the code no implicit this so what is this configuration and how it is used so it's one of the very rare one and a very good example is mentioned on the typescript official website for that the same example i want to elaborate you to discuss about this 
configuration. So let's consider a scenario here. There is a class called the rectangle, which is having two properties in that width and height. It is having a constructor. And inside a constructor, I'm using this dot width and everything. That's a regular scenario. Here, make sure that this keyword is representing the current object that we have already seen. This, key, this keyword is representing the current object of this uh, particular class rectangle. And that's the reason we are able to access this width and height. That's very perfect. But if you just closely look at here, line number 10, get function, get area function is one of the property. Of course, here also I can access the same. Let's say I'm saying log this dot width. Of course, I can access that because I'm inside the function of my class. Yes, it is possible to do that. But we are inside now one more function with that we are returning here. So the line number 15 is not the part of the rectangle object. It's not a rectangle object part. It's just an independent function which is getting delivered from here to some other purposes. So this keyword is not representing my rectangle object in this case. And that's the reason the data type of this keyword is any. So by default compiler won't allow to do that. So there is a specific configuration for that that is no implicit this equals to true. So if you just make it false, so it will just stop giving you the error pass. But the behavior of the code will be very much unexpected here because it is not guaranteed that this function will be receiving any uh, the current object while calling it. And that can be done by using a byte. But if they are calling it normally with some other things, so this uh, current object will be missing for this function and it will create the runtime errors. So of course it's better to have this equals to true and that's already by default inside our strict mode. So I'll keep these errors as it is for your understanding. I'm just commenting the complete code. One second, let me just comment the complete code. Yeah, that's it. You can just download this code if you just want to try it how it works. Let's understand the next useful configuration that is no unused local. So let's see how it works. So in our TS file, let me just start from the fresh here. And if I'm just writing a function here called display, and I don't want to do anything here, just some dummy stuff. Fine. Okay. So here, if I'm creating any variable, let's i equals to zero for example so we are not using this variable uh, for any purpose okay so by default so it should start so uh, throwing us some errors because these local variables we are not using so let's just turn on this configuration and let's see so immediately it started complaining me like there is some unused variable that is declared but there that you are not using it so it is not uh, any problematic, but it is better and to remove the unwanted variables that you are not using locally and it will reduce the complexity in the upcoming one. Maybe after some time when you are seeing your code and when you're using the unused variable, you might think it may be used for some purpose or something. So unwanted confusions will create. So it's better to keep this configuration turn on. By default, it's false. That's the reason when it was commented, it was not giving us any error and let, when I am turning this configuration on and saying it true, then only I'm getting this error. So we can just explore this option by just turn on and off the given configuration called no unused local. And one important thing here, if I, here I mentioned if j equals to zero, in this case, will I get the error for the line number one if I uncomment? I'll just take a pause for a minute so that you can think on it. Yes, so let's try. Let's uncomment this. No, we are not getting any error because the name of the configuration itself says that it is applicable for the locals, not the global variable. And what is the local variable which are available inside this function or maybe a particular scope of any class or maybe something else? That's perfect. no fall through cases in switch case. So by using this a configuration, we can avoid fall through cases in the switch. So let's try with a quick, quick small example here. So I'll just say a switch, which expect, uh, which is having some input called I, 
and here i'll start creating the cases let's say this case is for zero and uh, i'll say like log this this is one let's say like instead of zero we'll make it something one and here we'll also need to declare a variable called i and let's give some option to it that is one and here we need to mention the break so that it will not fall through let's copy this and create the three cases here so this is the second this is the third let's update the consoles here apply the prettier so that indentation will happen that's perfect so let's see the outcome here yes this is the one we are getting here that we are making it when we are changing it to so we are getting two here but let's say by mistakely we are uh, means uh, the developer or some by mistakely something is happening and we are forgetting to give this break so what is happening here the fall through case is getting created so whenever the second case will get execute automatically it will execute the third case as well so that's a behavior of switch if any one condition passes so immediately the next condition will also it will fulfill and start executing till the time it gets the break and in this case if i just save the uh, code and see so I'm getting two and three both, which is an incorrect behavior in this case. So what I missed here, I missed adding a break here. But my TypeScript is not complaining me about this. So if you want to make your TypeScript uh, compiler complain about this and give some errors, so you can just turn on this functionality. By default, it's turned off. So now here immediately it started complaining on the case two that case through case uh in switch there is some issue here and you uh, you can just see that uh if you just make it false here it will be gone so it's better to keep it on it's not that much uh very useful but if you want to keep your compilation more strict it is better so as soon as you identify this problem you'll get this error one that's perfect so let's solve the problem here okay now the compilation will be happily done so I'm removing this break here so that you can experience this problem when you download the code. Let's we'll try allow unreachable code. So what it means, so when you're writing a code or a function something, so in that if you're writing some set of uh, paths by using an if statement or the switch statement, so there are possibilities the code will go in the if statement, the code will go in else statement or maybe switch first case, second case, whatever it could be. But with that, if you're creating any particular code when there is no possibility to go there at any particular time, so it will give you the error called like unreachable code. So let's see with a quick example how it happens. So I just want to create a quick function here like e is greater than uh, 5. I just want to compare a number is greater than 5 or not. I'm taking a number as an input and the written type I just want to say as a boolean because I want to give true or false. So the simply I, I mean to say here if the n is less than 5. So simply say false. It's not greater than 5. So you say false and else you say it true so this we know this is a simple scenario and when you are calling it either this statement will occur or this statement will occur there is no possibility like any other thing will be written but let's say a developer doing a mistake here and writing something here return false something like this so it doesn't even make sense even the id the vs code it is not something like a typescript giving this particular warning or something the types the vs code is also saying like it's an unreachable code detected here uh, but if you want your compiler to fail here you can check the compiler is not failing here and if you want to make the compiler failure here so that you can reduce this type of errors as well there's not an error the issues so you can just go here and make it false this configuration by default it will be true you can just make it false i don't want to allow unreachable code so if you come back here you will get one error and it is highlighting this is an unreachable code so your developer can remove it and the code will be error free so for now i'll keep this error as it is so that you can experience if you download the code what is decorators here so in decorators if you want to add some additional support for your or classes or maybe any meta programming you want to add if you want to add any additional behavior to an existing class existing method existing parameters of any function so these decorators will help you 
so as we'll also try to see some of the examples where it can be used but remember with this particular module it's not something like a normal developer will, will be using a, uh, or creating the decorators always it is rarely used and it is used on advanced level let's say if you are creating an angular related application so there these decorators will help you to give you the additional possible options if you are using some other uh, advanced frameworks so there it will be more and more useful so in this particular module with typescript we'll just try to understand and create some scenarios where you can understand how the decorators will work and we'll also try to see how these decorators will be useful in advanced frameworks like angular so that you can understand and correlate your knowledge why we are using the decorators and i'll again repeat you please remember with decorators it's not something like that you're writing a program like a normal developer you need to think you need to uh, keep your ideology in a different way like you are attaching your code with any other different framework or you need to think from a compiler perspective so it's an advanced functionality where you're going to add the meta programming so you're going to provide any additional facilities on existing function or existing class so it's not something like just create an object and object oriented programming where you create an application for a, a particular scenario you need to think from a compiler side you need to think something like an integration side like you are attaching the types to any advanced framework so in that way you, we need to correlate this understanding for decorators we'll see more details so let's start our new module decorators What is class decorator and how we can get a maximum use cases out of it so uh, there is a scenario for example here like uh, we are creating a bank account class and the bank is saying that you cannot inherit this whatever the class that i am giving you you have to use it as it is and you have to create an object out of it and uh, work on that so uh, you cannot change the behavior or you cannot change additional things in that particular class so what is the class i am giving that's a final for you so i'll just add a uh, i'll just quickly uh, lock that particular class so that you cannot furthermore extend it and create a student bank account then the business bank account we don't want to allow that we just want to allow you create a bank account that class which which is provided by us so let's create a quick class here called bank account and the, the bank is saying that we will give you a facility to hold an account number in that that's it so i'm just creating a super simple one here for now to make it quick and give more time on understanding decorator so let's complete this initialization process account number yeah here we go any issues no so we have created a simple class here and that's it but the bank is saying that this class you have to use as it is and create the object as per your need and and you should proceed but uh, you, you cannot change this particular cl class so if this class is provided by the bank of course we cannot go to the library and change the things but if it is available here or maybe in library so of course we can do something like this right so i can just say student bank account which is extends extending the bank account and here i'm writing some additional functionality additional options we can say so here we are adding some additional options let's say some properties some methods which are specific for the student bank account but of course we are getting the basic things from the bank account and this behavior bank don't want to allow they don't want to use their facilities and you're extending it and then creating your own classes for further operations because of course you are using their basic operations which is being built by them so they want to allow that so they don't they just want to seize this but if they want to freeze this particular class so that you cannot change it or you cannot use it by using an extend like this so you should use as it is what they have given that's no problem for that so what we can do here so we can add a class decorator here so i'll just add add the red symbol here and mention lock class so i just want to lock this particular class okay that's fine so i need to create a function for this so what is exactly a decorator it is nothing but a simple function which will perform some additional things on top of this particular class 
so here you again you should understand we are talking about a meta program we are talking about changing the behavior on this particular class we are not talking about creating a normal object we are not talking about doing a console of seeing an output of account one dot account number so these are all the normal things that a programmer do to complete your business functionality right a business requirement creating objects and everything printing input output but here in this particular decorator we are trying to do some meta programming so we are enhancing the functionality for this class this is very important to understand and here is the most of the students get confused so let me just create a quick function here so that I can enhance my class functionality so that I can lock my class. So name of the class I'm giving here lock class and the parameter here. So here not that the, you, you should not get confused by using what is this parameter as a constructor and everything that we'll discuss in a moment. And just for your understanding for now, what we will do, we'll just do a constructor. We, 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 I'm just going consoling this constructor so what is happening in background here so when you're adding at the rate lock class here so this is just executing this function here when this class is getting initialized that's it please make sure this particular lock class this particular function will not get execute whenever you are creating an object like this if you're creating three objects so don't consider that it will get uh, what are called three times so this is a class level one. This is, will get executed only one time that also to enhance the functionality of this particular class. Perfect. So let's try to quickly console and see. And let me just remove some additional console here so that we'll not get confused. And here instead of this particular constructor to make the things much simpler. So decorator class decorator called i just want to confirm this is getting called or not yes it is getting called here that's super perfect and uh, even if i comment these all objects here still it will get executed because as we discussed this is a class level thing this is improving the functionality of the class there is nothing from the object perspective here so this will remove and try to understand what is happening inside this particular constructor here. Let's try to observe what is this parameter constructor and what it is giving in that. So it is giving you the complete constructor that we have written over here. This one, it, it is giving you this constructor. So of course, when we are adding a class decorator, so it, it is giving you as an input, the complete constructor. It is also giving you the how the behavior of a class works when it creates. So there is nothing to go in much detail about this particular constructor as of now. And let's quickly lock our class. Let's quickly lock our object. So this is JavaScript. So everything will be at the end will get converted to the object kind of thing. So here we need to use some additional functionalities given by the JavaScript. So we need to uh, call object dot freeze. And here we need to mention this constructor. Again, we also want to freeze all the information which is constructor.prototype. So all the prototype information, what we mean by prototype, all the properties, all the methods inside of our class. That also we want to freeze. So this is a JavaScript option. This is not, not a TypeScript option. This is a JavaScript specific option. What it will do in the strict mode, it will restrict you to change the properties and the uh, methods of your class or maybe extending it and everything uh, using this particular freeze option. So right now when the decorator is getting called, so it is locking all of the complete the class and all of its properties and methods. So now if I just try to go here and do some extend work of class student bank account, extend bank account, this will start complaining me. So let's save our things and see the output. So immediately it started complaining that this constructor is read only something kind of thing. Okay. One interesting thing here, we are not able to see any error inside our TypeScript. So that's a question, my question to you. You can just think on it for a minute. Why we are not getting any error in the TypeScript code that generally we get here found one error. Yes. So we are not getting this error because this is a JavaScript option. 
this will get executed directly in the runtime so this particular class when it's trying to extend and everything this bank account so it can be identified only by the javascript in the runtime well, like if this object is freezed or not like this class is allowed to extend and all these functionalities so that's the reason you are not getting an error over here so hope it's pretty clear why exactly the class decorator is needed and how we are using it so let's also try to understand who will create a decorator Generally, we create an object because we are a developer. We might be creating any project, website, or anything. And for a specific use case, we can create an object called a REST API and everything we'll do. But who will create this particular decorator? So generally, the library will be provided or maybe the uh, high-level framework like Angular and everything. So there, these decorators will be created to enhance the functionalities to add the meta programming to your classes which are available already or maybe you're creating to add some additional functionalities on top of that. Of course, you can also add additional uh, multiple decorators on a class and many more options are available that we are going to see in upcoming lectures. So hope for now it's clear how the class decorator work. Let's talk about one important configuration that you need to own one important flag called experimental decorators and why exactly it's needed. So in this particular tsconfig.json file, you must enable this particular experimental decorators in this particular module and from now, now onwards to use the decorators uh, functionality because this is by default not supportable. It is given in stage one, stage two, stage three. So it's, uh, it's under the running process. So by default, it's not turned on. You have to turn it on using this experimental mode inside your TS config. If you are not doing this, you will get a couple of errors. So whenever you're getting the errors regarding this, like decorators are not allowed, maybe not found whatever it could be, please make sure in your TS config file, this particular flag is set to true. decorator factories so it's not that difficult uh, the name it's uh, suggests something like a decorator factory is a very difficult term. Uh, it might sound a difficult but it's a super simple one only the name is difficult here we can say so when we call it decorator factories it means that it is just giving us a decorator it is just manufacturing a decorator and giving us so that's the reason it is saying decorator factories nothing more than that so this is our decorator log class so this decorator we are not calling here we are just annoting here we are just providing an annotation here on this particular bank account class the at the rate decorator is applicable is applied so we are not calling it we are just applying it here uh, on this particular class but when you create a decorator factories you need to call a particular function you need to ask some particular function to get executed and that function will return you a decorator which will be kept here so let's understand by modifying the same example. Make sure at the end, you just need a function here that should be presented here. Make sure we are not calling this function like this. We just need this function over here. We don't need the call. That's the final idea. Sounds perfect. So what we can do now, so for this particular log class, I can mention here, return because i want to give as a return a function here that's the reason i'm writing like this the same functionality i will write here whatever the constructor is needed and everything whatever this object freezing and everything i'm doing here that will i'll do inside this return anonymous function sounds perfect and here i'll remove and here i'll call this function what's happening here very clearly try to understand we are calling a function we are not calling a decorator that's the first thing we should understand so we are just trying to call a function and why we are saying it we are calling it because there is an opening bracket and the closing bracket for it so that's it there is no uh, 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 any concept of decorator here this is just calling a function super simple perfectly fine the function get called here and this function is returning you the decorator so when this function is returning your decorator, it means that at the place of this call, what will come? Your decorator will come and that is this decorator. So hope you understood now, it's exactly the similar like previous. But what's the difference between this and the previous one, why we are writing in this way? 
So the core reason of writing in this way, we can pass some parameters here. In previous case, you might have seen we were just uh, adding a decorator here. So we cannot pass any information if you want to pass any additional information for our decorators. So if we are calling it now. So we, are pa we can pass some extra information here that might be needed inside our decorator and in the meta programming. And that's the reason all the decorators will be written maximum in the using decorator factory so that we can give some additional inputs, we can receive it here and we can make use of that while building the meta programming for our class or what is the functionality we are writing. One important change in the naming convention you might have observed till now. So I'll just take a pause for a minute so that you can uh, understand on your own what is the difference in the naming convention that we change suddenly in the decorators. Yes, there is a change. So we call decorators are just a normal function, but they are doing some additional meta programming or maybe the annotation work for us. So it's by the end, it's just a function here. But if you see here, we are starting this function using the first letter capital and all the words of this particular function with first letter capital. That generally we follow for the uh, class, then uh, our uh, interfaces and more similar to uh, similar to that. But why suddenly we are using in this case? Of it's, is it compulsory? No, of course the naming convention is not compulsory here. I can also make it small like this. But uh, making it small here, it will not identify you as a decorator. So all the libraries which are written globally, whatever the convention is followed to write the decorators, that is with this. And that's the reason we are also following the same condition, uh, the co convention. But of course, it's not a compulsion. You can go on your own, but it's always better to follow the community guidelines to keep it first letter capital for your decorators, even if it, it is a function. Let's try to create a simple class decorator example where we can understand class decorator in more detail. So we are going to create a class decorator which is helping us to give some additional information and adding some additional properties to our class. So we have a general class called bank account. That sounds good. And uh, let me just complete its uh, initial structure with whatever we do as constructor and everything. So account number equals to account. That's it. Okay, fine. So we are having some bank account class here. That sounds well. But along with this, we are going to add one additional decorator for class, which is adding some additional properties in this particular class. So let's say uh, I want to keep a decorator with the name like bank. And standards. So there is one additional decorator uh, factory that I'm trying to call, which we will create shortly. So this decorator will be uh, responsible to add few more additional properties for our class. So, so this is our decorator factory, which is going to return a decorator. As always, we'll we are going to have some constructor here, co constructor as a parameter, and here, like uh, we are going to add some additional property uh, for our uh, for our class on which this particular decorator is create uh, uh, added. And before that, let me just say a log here and confirm my constructor is getting executed. Yes, it is getting executed. So what I want to do here, I want to say constructor dot prototype dot created date time equals to new. What exactly we are doing here? We are just adding a new property for our class. So this is equivalent to the syntax. This is equivalent syntax for this. So what is this pro prototype and everything? 
So this is more regarding the JavaScript. So if you want to learn more about the JavaScript that separately can be done where you can understand what is prototype and everything. But for now here, we should not go in much detail of the prototype because it's not uh, the one that we are learning in detail now. So with this prototype, you can just understand on this particular class, on this particular object, you are trying to give a new property and giving some value to it. So the equivalent code also I have written here. Let me just remove this here. And uh, as soon as we are done with this, uh, what we will do, we'll create a variable here called count1 acc1 equals to a new bank account we want to give to one of the customer. And we also need to give some account number that we already know. And here, if you just try to console log acc one dot account number, of course, you will get whatever the account number you have given initially. On top of that, if I'm using created date time here, so I'm getting some error here, like the created date time does not exist here. Uh, that's of course does not exist here, but our decorator is adding that. So our compiler or maybe the, the VS code that we're using, they should be able to know it, right? So we should not get this error. So even though we are getting this error, we'll just try to save our code and try, try to see the output. Yes, we are getting some output here like August 6, whatever it could be the current date time. But how we are getting this even though we are having an error here? Because this we have already learned, like even though the JavaScript or the TypeScript having some code, it will create the JavaScript code and it will execute it. So if you want to restrict the TypeScript, TypeScript compilation and the output behavior, and you want to completely stop doing an output emitting when there is at least a single error. So for that, a separate configuration is there in the TS config file. But for now, uh, let's try to cover up this particular error with some quick fix here. So with quick fix, we are just trying to add an index signature here. So this particular line is making sure and saying that any particular property on this particular class is allowed. This is of course not related to any way with uh, uh, the learning we are doing in this lecture. This is just adding an index signature due to which it, 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 it allows any property to be called on our class like this. Okay. So this time it is not giving you, giving you the error because TypeScript related formalities we have completed and we are getting the appropriate the value for it. So one very interesting thing I would like to highlight here. So account two, and again, I'm uh, for account two, I'm trying to display the created date time. So for me, everything is giving same because it's happening on the same moment. Uh, what I want to uh, distinguish, what if the created date time is there for account one is different than the created date time, which is there for account two is different. So that's what the difference I want to create. So I'll give you the, uh, this assignment to you. You can just explore this. So this is same for both the accounts here or the different one or it's a class level one. So you can just revise whatever we have learned so that you can understand this thing. So I'll just take a pause so that you can finalize some conclusion from your end. Hope you got some answers for this. So very first thing with this created date time, I'm not able to distinguish both the output. So what I will do instead of this new date here, I'll just try to say new math. So which, uh, not new math, uh, with the, okay, with the random, we can get the more accurate and immediate results. So let's say if this particular math.random getting executed two times, so of course, we'll get two different random numbers. And let's say if it is getting executed only once, then both will be same. So let's try to see the output now. Yes, so both are exactly similar. If you just see it carefully, both are exactly similar. It means there is no difference for object one and the object two. And why there is a difference, you should be knowing this, we have discussed in the last few lectures. Okay, so why it's same for this? Because the execution of this function is happening, execution of this decorator is happening when your class is created, not when your object is created. If you just want to again confirm it, so let's confirm it here. I'm just saying like uh, decorator, executed 
okay so let's see the outcome yes decorator executed here and you can observe this is prior to all the object creation that we are doing here and even though if i remove this object creation and everything still it works it means this is happening when the in memory this class is getting initialized so hope you understood how exactly in detail uh, this example is working in a new property we are adding to an existing class by using the bank standards decorator in the next lecture we are also going to see one advanced example related to which is being used by the angular execution sequence for your decorators so we uh, we know we can give a multiple decorators for a same class as a class decorators but let's talk about the execution of that that will help us to understand which decorator will be called after uh, the which decorator so that uh, the functionalities we can build like uh, in that way so let's say uh, this is a class decorator so very first thing here try to understand how the execution is happening when this uh, decorator factor is getting called and then then when the actual decorator is getting called so let me just mention here this is a class decorator class decorator uh, decorator factory called let's copy it and here let me just mention this is actual decorator called here okay sounds good let's see the output so initially what should happen here this is a we are calling the function just a function i'll say that is or we can say the decorator factory that is of course a function so it's just calling a log uh, class function decorator factory so of course this function should get executed first and then this decorator will come up over here and then whenever the execution of this class will happen in memory so this decorator will also get called so simply this should get executed first and this is second let's see the outcome so of course we are getting the uh, decorator factory first call and then the actual decorator is getting called sounds good let's try to apply a one more quick decorator here so i'll just create one more decorator here with a name called log and uh, there are no parameters of course here and in written i'll just try to give a decorator so if i want to give a decorator here so the syntax for that is you should accept a constructor as a parameter function to it and uh, while returning i don't want to do anything i just want to do some console logging here so i'll just copy these two consoles here so this is a log so this is a log decorator factory called yes that looks good and again here when the actual decorator uh, for execution will happen so there i'll say log uh, decorator call so this is one more new decorator we have created with the name of log where we are just giving a particular decorator which is just doing a log operation as also the decorator factory is also doing a log operation so we want to give it here at the rate log so we are calling a decorator factory here so this decorator factory which will return us a decorator so now it's interesting to understand in what sequence these console will happen so let's clearly observe here this is a log class and then the log decorator both are uh, uh, given on the bank account class so i'll just take a pause here so you can just write this code and see what output is coming and just try to figure out why exactly it's coming in that sequence Hope you have observed the different sequences which are coming. So let's go to the output and see the sequence. So it is calling very first thing log class decorator factory call. Again, log decorator factory call. First the log class and then log. So so first this is getting called and then this is getting called. So first it is saying uh, lo uh, log class decorator factory call and then log decorator factory call. Let me just confirm yes so the order of sequence we have given here with that the decorator factories are getting called that's look perfect so when this decorator factory is called here so we are getting our actual decorator here so we are done with the execution of line number 11 super good and it is given this the decorator please remember here it is not calling your decorator when you are the cl uh, lock class decorator will be called when the execution of this particular class will happen in memory 
sounds good after that it is going to the lock uh, decorator factory and it is calling this particular line and giving you the back your decorator it is not executing it so both the decorators are ready over here because the decorator factory is given the respective decorators after that, a strange behavior you might have observed. The firstly, the log decorator is getting called. We are talking about the actual decorators. I'm talking about the decorator, this one. So it is getting called the log decorator factory and then the log class decorator, uh, sorry, not a factory. It's a log decorator call and then log class decorator call. So the sequence of decorators called is the last one is always get called first and then the next order of it. So you can easily see here it is calling the log and then log class decorator. So don't be much confused about the uh, factors in which way it's getting called and then how, in which way the normal decorators are getting called. It's super simple. So we are using a decorators factories here. That's the reason it might giving you a, a small trouble here. So let uh, <coughs> quickly let me comment this. And let me just write it in a normal way. I, I don't want to go in much complex way of that uh, decorator factory and everything so that it will be super simple for me. Yeah, we are ready with the first. This I'm just doing so that you can understand the sequence is not that complex of execution. So we are ready with the two decorators. There is no sign of any decorator factory. Now let's forget about the. Uh, forgot about the decorator factories now. So it's my log decorator and it's my log class <coughs> decorator. So if I am getting the errors here because we are not using the factories. So let's remove this and let's see now. So simply this is the first one. This is the second one. So of course the, the log decorator uh, will get executed first. We are talking about the decorator and then the log class decorator. So this is what the sequence is followed. Let's see the outcome. Yes. So the last one will be called first and then the upper of that. So in this sequence, it will get caught. Let me just roll back it and go to the with factories here. I guess we have just did a console here. Okay, let's figure out the last output. Yes, so I'll request you to, you also try this combination and everything with normal decorators, with decorator factors so that you can better understand it. And once you understood this, it will help you to create the advanced decorators when there is a need of uh, any uh, dependency between two decorators. Let's say uh, we know the decorators being used to add some meta programming or maybe to enhance the functionality of the class the class decorators are used. So if you're adding some additional functionality inside the log that might be required in log class. So of course the log should be at the bottom because the extra functionality is the extra metadata that you are adding to the class bank account are needed inside the log class. So that time this sequence matters. So please try with these examples and let's do multiple console and try to play around it to understand it in more detail. Let's try to build a great example uh, in an angular way a class decorator is used. So the people who are not uh, familiar with the angular, just a quick note to you how exactly the angular functions and what we are trying to do here with class decorator for angular. So for example, let me show you this is one of the website. This is just a uh, sample website a template I'm showing you or uh, just a random website from the internet or uh, demo website. So it is giving you a lot of options like a menu, then it is also on top, it is giving you a few options, then it is also showing you many uh, data here as a dashboard starts here. So in Angular, what it happens, everything is divided into some components. Let me give you an example here. So uh, if you are able to see these orders, total revenue, customers and product view. So these four will be treated as four components. Each of these components will have a separate HTML and separate TypeScript code to handle that and get the data from the server or backend, whatever it could be. So this particular box, we can call it as a component and we can work it on separately and completely individually. If anything bad happens, so that will happen with this particular component orders and everything like total revenue, product views and the customers, these three will be perfectly working fine. So these could be the four different components uh from the angular perspective 
so how this class decorator will help in angular so class dec decorators plays a very big role in angular so it will help you to combine your html code with the typescript code and many more functionalities on top of that so here is a sample component file, the TS file from the Angular. So the people who are familiar with the Angular syntax, you can relate your knowledge now. So it is showing you the export class, the component, and whatever it is, it's a, you are writing a class component here. And to make it as a component, it is mandatory to add a decorator of component. And we also give some certain input called selector in HTML code where it should be displayed the template URL, which HTML code should be used and the the providers are like which service file to be used. That's not a, uh, uh, necessary here to understand in more details. And the people who are pretty much new and don't know the Angular, so for you, whatever the understanding I have given you, let's say these four boxes uh, are called four different components and this one box is representing this. So the HTML code for that will be present here and the TypeScript code, the getting the data from the server and everything, we can write it completely here. So in this particular one file itself, a component file, we can manage everything, the UI, the backend, the processing and everything. It is not just one file. If you clearly see, it is attaching its HTML file and the processing file, the scripting here in the TypeScript. So let's uh, try to do the same way inside our application. So in our application here, I'll just go to my HTML code and we are having some random other details. I'll just remove those and let it be this hello world. I'll also try to create a quick table here and uh, I'll create a row in that uh, TD and one more TD. And in this similar example here, that is orders, total revenue, customers. So the first one I'll say for me it's orders. The second one is total revenue. Let me just copy the second line. So the customers and the product views. Customers. Product views. Perfect. Let's see our output. Of course, it will not be great. I just want to create a small little example like how the, the Angular framework is designed, not how to write an Angular code, but how the Angular framework is designed on the compilation level or maybe the framework design level. So let me just quickly add some borders here to make it more good. So I want to add one pixel border of solid here of the color black. I hope it's correct. Yeah, correct. And uh, it's better to add inside a style. And uh, uh, a total width of 100% I want to occupy of the screen and here the weight 50% in the first one I want to occupy. Let's confirm. Yeah, it's looking a nice example now. So let's quickly copy the same. It's not needed to do in all. Okay. That's it. We are having a more similar example that we have seen over here so we have divided into four different things but it's a simple html file so at this particular place let's say i want to have a more details about my orders and the complete order related things the processing of that the backend processing the html code everything over here i want to do it with a component so what i will do here so instead of this i'm just trying to write a div and for this div i'll give an id called order div because this we need to refer inside our TypeScript code. So this is something called a selector we'll say because this is a selector. This will be a selector so that we can identify this area inside our HTML code. So let's go back to the TypeScript file here and here try to quickly design uh, orders related things or maybe I'll just change this name to uh, okay it's orders right. Let me just confirm what are the fields are given in this example so that better I can assist here. So here the number of orders are there 
okay number of orders eight five of uh, six eight four something like that okay no problem so order so i'm just trying to create a class called orders here number of orders i'll say here so how generally we write like it's a number and i'll just randomly mentioning here itself i'm not going in the complicate uh, the complications of constructor and everything here this sounds good okay so here i would like to quickly add a decorator so i'm creating the decorator with the name component okay so we'll go in any way that we have created other decorators first then we'll enhance it so that you can better understand it how we generally do it we return a function which is accepting a constructor Let me just say hi here because I just want to confirm the execution is going very smooth. Okay, so now here uh, we want to play around it uh, and with this particular HTML code and we want to attach this particular HTML area with our TypeScript code of order here. So what I'll try to do here in this particular decorator, we need to get the data of our HTML uh, selector and then we need to add some HTML code over here. So for that, I'll say very first thing I'll I need to mention here my HTML code. Let's say orders will be displayed here, and this is an HTML code. So let me just I'm just trying to add some HTML code here. Okay, and after that, one more parameter I would like to give where it should be displayed the selector. So the selector I'll give you this order div let me come back here and here i would like to give the selector okay so right now it's a super simple one to this particular decorator factory we are giving two parameter one is my html code and second is the order div super perfect let's receive it here so we are having a html code which is of type string here and we are also having a selector which is of type string again let's see everything working smooth yes try to uh now inside this particular decorator instead of this console log and all now we will try in more detail to get the html element of that uh, uh, of that order div here so we'll write document dot get element by id and which element we want to get this particular order div which is stored here inside a selector okay so and here inside this particular html element now this html element is representing you this order div so whatever you want to mention inside this div you can just do it there with dot inner html so here if i just say dot inner html equals to whatever the html code that i have received in my parameter this html code i'm adding here and here it started suddenly showing some issue like uh, so what we can do here because it can be null here so i'll just add a exclamator here which is saying that it will not be a, a null and there will be always compulsory value just a typescript related thing we are providing so we should not be confusing with this so let's see the outcome now Yes, it is displaying orders will be displayed here and it's super simple from our HTML code. We have created a component called decorator. The what is the HTML code we are providing from here and where we want to put it inside our HTML code and including the scripting we are able to handle right from our TypeScript code. And this logic, this particular behavior is being used inside the Angular. So this is the core functionality of Angular. So let's also try to uh, play around it more. Let's say, for example, what is the number of orders are there that you want to display inside the HTML? Because uh, as I told you, your HTML front end code, your scripting, all are at one place. So why not to use this information and present a very well information like this? The, how many orders you are having? Six, eight, four, something like that. So in our example, what I can do, uh, I'll just 
quickly say here let data equals to constructor okay so what i'm doing here i'm just trying to create a new object of this particular order again not to go in much detail about this because this is all the advanced framework related integration level thing this is just an example i'm showing you how the angular framework is being created in background so with this particular data i'm getting a new object for the class order so what i can do here i can get the data like this particular number of orders now so what i can say log data dot let's see in console we are getting it no yeah the reason for that is the fun the the the, the the data type we have mentioned here is function, but we need to make it any here. So let me just rerun the code. It's still the same. Set properties of undefined number of orders. Is anything? Yes, it should be a new here. This time it should be working. Yes, we are getting a 684. In, it means inside my decorator uh, functionality, I'm getting an access to a brand new object called order. So why, uh, how we can integrate this information inside my HTML code. So what I can do here, instead of this long string, I'll say orders equals to in an angular way, I'm trying to display. So I'm mentioning two curly brackets open, two curly bracket close, and I'm giving my variable name inside my HTML code. So you can see now how it is simple from an HTML to insert a value inside it. So let's see how to do that in the uh, decorator, this functionality. So it is a super simple, uh, normal thing I'll use. So what I'll do, uh, this particular HTML code, HTML code equals to, HTML code dot replace, and let's confirm replace, either replace its own value, or will it return something? I guess it returns something. Yes, it returns something. So we can also do the replace here itself. Uh, okay, we'll do it here only. Better because we can do for multiple one. Replace dot. So what I want to replace, I want to replace all the places where this thing is mentioned with data dot number of order. That's super perfect. And this updated code, the HTML code, we are giving it as an inner HTML for DIV. So let's see how it works now. And it's working very great. So we are getting orders equal to 683. So now not only one particular play uh, variable, we can also play around the multiple variables. Let's say I'll say uh, uh, next order i would just want to display the, the 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 number of the next order so next order number is this is 684 right so i'll say 685 so 685 is the next order i want to display it on the screen to my user so it's very simple i can just enhance my html code and to just make it more readable now i'll just use some different string notations here so this is my first let me just get it down on the next. Okay, so, so here, uh, just a passage I'd like to print, I'll, and I would like to say, like, here, the next order number, next order number, I would like to display here, and next order. Okay, and I just need to update here. So it's a next order. Next order. Let's see. I guess something we are missing here. Anyone can guess what we are missing? So it is replacing the number of order previous one. Is all the code is compiled well? Yes, but still we are able to see the previous one. The orders and the, let's try to add some random thing here so that we can confirm it is getting printed. Yes, it is getting printed. Okay, fine. We are missing with this closing bracket here. The closing one. Uh, there should be something missing here. 
of course we'll have these issues because uh, we are not using it like a normal html code we are using inside a string right so i was missing with this particular closing one here it should be working now yes it's working and again i guess something extra i'm giving here because yeah that's great now we are also able to see the next order six eight five and everything i can just able to manage from here itself so you can understand from a developer how it will be simple and these decorators like component and everything will be given you by the framework so in our angular case this dev uh, this decorator is being given you from the angular framework you should not be worried about this you should be only worried about how you can make this functionality more better by just working around these options now this data i'm hard coding this data you can get it from a rest api because you are in a scripting language you can just write a function you can call ajax or many more functionalities here right so this is the way using angular we create great applications and a stunning applications like this so hope you understood in this particular example how the angular works in background with the great decorators let's understand the property decorator so when it will be useful so in a class we'll be having a set of properties a set of methods and then we'll create a class but on those particular properties let's say in the bank account class there are properties called account number balance so on these properties if you want to add additional metadata pro meta programming or maybe any additional annotations to pro enhance its functionality of that particular pro uh, property so you can add a property decorator so let's try to understand with a quick example by creating a bank account class here that uh, we have done many times earlier so we have generally something called account name which is of stripe string so let's say i'm providing a name of the here so right now it's not a correct way to provide because we have that constructor and everything uh just for the sake of understanding let me just provide na here and uh, let's say it uh or let it be initially for now i'll just keep it like this so everything is okay and if i just create an object out of it and uh, account one new bank account so i don't need to do anything in parameter because there is no constructor it's a added in build with empty parameters and uh, let me just log this account one dot account name and along with that i would also like to display the length of it length of it so it should be five yes we are getting a five we have some previously written html code something i'll just remove that so that no further confusions will be created to keep it simple let's keep validating everything is good yes this is also we are getting it what i want to do now in this particular typescript code if i add additional spaces here at the starting it should not be allowed right if a user is giving additional spaces at the start, additional spaces at the end, it is not a good behavior to accept that. So user might give that, but when you're assigning it to a property, you should not be accepting that, or maybe even if user is giving, you have to trim it. So if I see my output now, this is getting stored as it is in my uh, class, object, whatever it could be, and it is also taking that additional spaces. Then that's the reason we are getting the length 13 now. It should not be done in this way. So what I will do, I'll write some additional property decorator on top of this particular property, which will ensure whenever any assignment is happening, whenever we are adding any value name to this particular property, there will be some validation will be happening and some manipulation on that particular uh, string will happen and a trimming can perform. So let's see how it works so let me add a decorator here called trim so i'm calling a decorator factory something called trim that we are going to write so we'll make it t capital okay so this decorator factory we need to create a function so we'll go to the tra traditional way that we have learned till now okay very first thing here when we uh, were saying return function uh, so generally we used to give constructor previously and it's a function here 
this is what we used to give when we had written the class decorator because we were uh, the, the input for that decorator was a class so the, in, the the input for this function decorator was a constructor but in this case we are just bothered about this particular property so the input for this particular decorator will be the uh, will be this particular property so only the property related informations will come up here. It is not something like that only this property name something like that will come but along with that in which scope it is present all those things will come. So there are two inputs for this one is target. So I'll just give any target here the data type for now and uh, the key I'll mention the keys of type string here. Okay what exactly this target and this key it's a very simple so i'm writing a uh, decorator here trim so when i'm trying to perform some operation on this particular account name i'll be needing this account name is present inside this class object that is called as target so whenever you're performing any execution over here inside your decorator you should be knowing your particular properties inside which particular object so that will help you to do some additional options right that's the reason this target will be helpful. So in this case, this target is equal, equal, equal to the object in which your property is present. So if it, this is account name, so this particular target will be your account object. Second is key. So key represent how to get this particular property out of your object, out of your target. So if I want to get the details about this account name, I need to write a log target of key. So with this I can get so target is my object inside my object I want to get this key this key means this particular property so I'll be getting this value here so let's quickly console it and see the outcome we are getting it undefined here that's a different reason why we are getting an undefined here that we will see shortly super perfect so next functionality we are going to build here that is let we want to take the value of this target it's of key inside this variable so what is this value what is the value you are assigning or maybe inside this particular uh, property will be there that will come inside a value super correct so next what we'll try to do we'll try to create two methods one is getter and the setter because when there is a property like this so either you are going to assign some value or you are going to read some value out of it so that's the reason how the assignment should happen and how the reading should happen how uh, this getter and setter for this particular method we are writing inside our decorator so let's quickly write it let and with that setter itself we can uh, uh, remove these additional trims if you remember we have written getter and setter to perform some additional validation uh, for a particular property so it's a similar kind of thing here so i'm creating a let uh, getter so it is not accepting any input. I'm just creating an arrow function here to make it super simple. And it is returning this value. So what are the values present inside uh, this uh, property? I'm going to return it. And for setter, uh, for setter, it accepts uh, input. What is the input? The input will be next value for example i'm setting some value to it right so this particular next val will be my next value and it will be of type compulsorily string okay so what we will do here we'll say the value this value this value will be equal to the next value dot trim so what you are doing now you're not assigning your next value directly to the current value of this property you are trimming it and then applying it super perfect so now if i just try to see the output here my output is add is it as it is line number 30 we are on so like so that's a javascript related line number so let's ignore it but still the trimming is not happening here we have written the getter we have written the setter here but still it's not happening happening for us what could be the reason for this i'll just take a pause here and i'll request just do a quick research on it why our setter functionality is not working even though we are setting uh, a new value to our property what we are missing let's try to do a quick r d and try to solve this problem i'll just take a quick pause super perfect so the reason here is that this is your decorator so this is just an execution is happening what you have you have done 
you have just took a control of your value super perfect this is not an actual getter this is just a simple function you have written it but you are not using it anyway this is one more function that you have written but you are not using it okay you have to attach you have to map this getter and the setter to your property how to do that so in javascript they have provided you some couple of options to do that so that's object dot define property okay so for which property you want to define so if you are saying about the property you also need to mention about the target right so target means in which like which particular object so i want to define the property for this target inside that in this particular key so you are defining inside a particular object for which particular property so in this case for this account name inside this particular target in for this particular key what do you want to do so you want to give this getter so you are saying that for get use my newly created function called getter for set use my newly created setter which is doing the doing the trimming and then assigning the value so don't use the default one use my setter after that let's couple of other options we need to add that will not go in much detail about it which is not needed as of now fine so we are done so we have done the mapping of our newly created setter and the getter for this particular property so whenever this assignment is happening it is not going to directly go inside your property it will go using a setter that you have defined so inside this setter it is saying that let's apply a trim and then assign it so now try to see the outcome it's super perfect so it's giving you the exact name of the person here and the length is exactly five so with that we are confirming the trimming is happening very correctly with this we have also learned one more thing uh, for applying this particular trimming and everything it is not important you should be creating a object and everything whenever this assignment is happening it will execute so let's try to create a uh, one more assignment over here so account one dot account name i'll just try to change the account name over here so in this case there are how many six letters are present here so when i'm doing this assignment it looks like a normal assignment that we have generally done a equal to some value b equal to some value it is similar to that but we have some special decorator called trim so due to this a new setter and the getter applied for this so it will get assigned using a setter and it will apply some trimming so let's try to add some spaces at the start some spaces at the end so it should give us exactly the name and the length should be 16 so if this is happening it means we can say the newly set setter is working for us super perfect so with this we learn now how many times you're assigning some value your newly created setter is getting called let's also confirm the getter is getting called so we are uh, getting this value here and here right two times we are getting the value of account name property uh, only two times yes two times this is one assignment and this is two times get we are using is it means this getter should be used so let's get a call i'm just consoling it so we should get this two times yes we are getting it two times so in this way we have seen how we can set a property decorator and add additional functionalities now you can create any number of classes or anything you just need to add this decorator if you want your property should behave in this way and they should have any additional spaces so along with that you can set up many other decorators there are many inbuilt decorators are present with different uh with different uh frameworks there are uh the decorators like read only and many more so hope you understood how the property decorator works. What is method decorator and how it is used? So method decorator is generally used to add some additional capabilities like and meta programming to your existing function so that you can enhance its functionality, which might be a common functionality and you don't want to rewrite it always. 
So let's say we have an example here. We have written something, a class called bank account. And in this particular bank account, we have a functionality called debit. And let's just say here, debit successful. Uh, but uh, while calling this particular functionality, account one dot debit. So it's happening directly here. It's whenever we are calling that particular functionality, of course, it's a normal behavior, but uh, we want to get, take some additional confirmation from a user. Would you like to really do this or don't know? Based upon the user input, we want to execute this functionality. So what we need to uh, write a manual confirmation like is okay. And here I'll just try to take a confirmation from a user screen like are you sure to debit. Okay, and as soon as I get the output out of it, then it will just say is okay or not based upon the user confirmation, then we'll decide to execute or don't do anything. So it's super simple. If the user is saying yes, then only the debit will happen, otherwise, it will not. So Okay, the, it's asking like, are you sure you want to debit? I'm saying, okay. So the debit is successful. So it's giving okay here and the true, whatever it could be. And the debit is happening for us. Let's say this time cancel. So this time, no debit is happening. Let's do it again. Yes. So this is a very common functionality. So writing it every time manually here doesn't make sense. So why can't we have a decorator for this additional capability of our function? by using a meta programming. And this is what the method decorator. So we'll just comment out this functionality for now, which we have written manually, and we'll try to add a method decorator called uh, confirmation or, or the user confirmation. This will be more specific. So we want to take a user confirmation here. And let's quickly write our function like we have done. No, so this is a decorator factory we are writing and written a function, a target to it. So what is this target? In which particular object we are performing an execution for this method? So this will be of type any. What is key? In this case, it will be name of your function and one more additional parameter we will be having here. That is one second. Let me just repair these errors. Yeah. One more additional parameter we'll be having here. That is descriptor. So descriptor and uh, the data type for that is available in JavaScript that is property descriptor. So here is our new uh, decorator available that we are returning here and just let's say a log r because I just want to confirm the uh, execution happening of this decorator very correctly. We are getting some error here. What is that? Expected. Okay. And here also we are having, yeah, we need to call our decorator factory because it's not a decorator, it's a decorator factory. And this is our decorator. So let's say we are getting a high. Yes, I confirm it means the execution is happening. Let's try working in detail for this. Uh, very first thing, what I will do, I'll just take a backup coffee, copy of my original function. Because it is something like that, uh, we want to perform execution of our original function or you don't want to execute anything. So we just need to write some if else statement. So there our, our original definition of our function we might lost. Where is the original uh, function? Uh, like whatever the function is getting executed, the actual one that is present inside this descriptor. So what I'll do here, I'll say let original function equals to descriptor dot value so here i'm keeping a backup coffee copy of my original function and here i would like to say the descriptor dot value what is this descriptor value dot value the actual function that should get executed so now onwards this function will not get executed what function will be executed this function will get executed because you are setting here the descriptor dot value it means this will be your function this is not your function from now onwards if you want to confirm that what you can do uh, okay let me just comment this for now and uh, let's call account one dot debit so what will happen the decorator then what's happening here in decorator let's say console decorator called 
and after that you are expecting your function will also get called that's super correct that will also get executed here first the decorator called and your then function is getting called but when i'm saying you when you're writing descriptor dot value it means this particular function so you are not executing this function now from now onwards this is your function so let's see in this case your actual function get executed or it is getting uh, overridden by this particular descriptor dot value so in this case we should get just get decorator dot decorator called yes very correct we are getting only decorator called and we are trying to call the debit it is saying there is no function something like that because we are incomplete with this uh, thing till now so or uh, incomplete we can say or let me just write the functionality for this function uh, there are argument the rest api argument uh, the rest params i'm giving here because we are not sure what could be the, all the parameters for our function and let me just do one opening and closing bracket here and let us say uh, i am a uh, function from decorator so instead of this this function will execute now because this is updating your complete function let's confirm now yes so it is not calling the original one if you want to call the original one you need to write some mechanism to call this particular original function so here is your original function you need to write some mechanism here to call this and we are going to do that in a while i just want to confirm you how you can change complete function itself by using your decorator so what we are going to do here we are going to take a user confirmation is okay confirm like are you sure to debit and instead of asking are you sure to debit what we will do we will just ask are you sure because we can use the same user confirmation decorator for credit as well or any other functionalities right so it's a common good decorator so why need to make it more narrow and specific to one so just say are you sure okay we'll get some uh, user confirmation here so we'll say is okay or false if it is is okay what you need to do you need to call the original function that is this one so where is your original function now so we have kept a backup copy copy of our original function so let's play around it original function dot apply so if you remember we have seen something called as bind so this is also similar to that so when you're calling a function by using apply or bind you need to firstly pass inside which particular target environment it should get executed so for us the target environment is this for now just the sake of understanding for now or maybe uh, you can also give this target which is already available with you okay and then you need to pass all the parameters for that function so already we have taken a copy of it so let's use of args so what exactly you are doing here so you are giving all the parameters right now there are zero parameters so any function can have one parameter can two three so we are just using some rest parameters here because we are trying to build a general functionality so we don't need to bother about it just think of it like you are calling your original function by giving their appropriate uh, parameters super perfect of course it will give you some return value so let's store it somewhere and return it back result and when there is nothing happening like the user is saying no so let's say you are just returning a null value okay so let's see the outcome now and i'm just removing all this console extra so that will be more specific okay i'll just keep this one for now so let's refresh it it will ask us are you sure so what is happening here this is our decorator so when you are calling it dot debit the so firstly your decorator will get executed and decorator is going here this is your object account one this is your key debit function name this is descriptor your complete uh function here and here you are uh, uh rewriting your function code here and you're taking a user confirmation you have also took a backup copy of your function if the user is saying yes then only you are calling your function or you are saying no i don't want to do anything so let's make it okay so your actual functionality of debit is getting executed and just let's say no cancel this time so it is not getting executed 
So this is what is being written inside the libraries and the Angular framework, something kind of thing. You should don't be worried about this. This is we have just written an advanced functionality here to understand. What you just need to bother it about it, make use of the decorator like this. So if you just want to give additional user confirmation for any function from now onwards, you just need to add user confirmation decorator. So let's create one more function here called credit. And let's try to reuse this. And it's a credit successful operation. And this time I would like to ask for credit as well. So we are adding this decorator. And instead of debit, let's say we want to do the credit now. And this time it will be useful for us because we are just using are you sure? So, okay, it is asking us, are you sure? We said yes, credit is successful. When we are saying no, the credit functionality is not happening. So this is how with just a single line, you can uh, import many more things on top of your function by using method decorator. Let's see how we can pass parameters for our method decorator. And here is the use of the decorator functions will be helpful because we can pass some parameters for your decorators using decorator factories. So let's say one uh, requirement we are having, we are have using this user confirmation for debit and credits, all is perfect, super. And let's say if we are calling for credit, right? But we want this particular message should be very specific for credit only. It is asking, are you just sure? So we don't want to limit this. We want to make it very much uh, uh, specific for credit. Are you sure you want to credit for your account like this? And when we are performing the debit, we want to do that. But in this case, we can't do this because it's a common uh, message we are giving and we are utilizing our method decorator at many places. So why can't we pass some parameter here with this one? Because we are using the method decor of uh, decorator factories where it takes a parameter because it's just a, a, at last a function. So let's try to pass some parameter here. Like, are you sure? Are you sure to debit from your account? Question mark. And the same thing I'll do inside the credit one. Are you sure you want to perform credit? from your account or to your account immediately started complaining me because our decorator factory doesn't accept any value here so let's accept this message which is of type string here and make use of that in providing the confirmation message on the screen okay so let's see the outcome now refresh the screen so immediately it started giving are you sure you want to credit to your account yes we want to credit are you sure you want to credit to your account? No, it cancel. Let's confirm for the debit one as well instead of credit. Are you sure you want to debit from your account? Okay, and same the cancel one. So this is how we can make use of the decorator factories to customize and give some parameters for our decorators. In this particular module, we are going to talk about the advanced topics in TypeScript. So we are going to talk about the topics which are very rarely used and this is just to elaborate about the detailed understanding. So this module won't have any quizzes or the practice assignment. So we are just going to explore here the topics that uh, you might be needed in any advanced behavior or maybe which might be needed in an advanced project that you are building and a random topics which are very rarely covered in many articles or maybe which are on the official document only. So we'll just try to play around these concepts and I'll try to give my best here to introduce you the advanced topics in this particular module. Again, I'll repeat, this is a complete optional module. So no quizzes and practice is needed on this module. This is just an exploration we are doing because now we are pretty much comfortable with the TypeScript. So let's begin advanced topics here. The first topic that we are going to see is declaration merging. So what is declaration merging here? In declaration merging, it's a unique feature that we can say provided only by the TypeScript here. It will not be, uh, you will not be able to figure this out in any other scripting or maybe any other programming which is well known. 
uh, in declaration merging what you can do you can declare the same class or declare the same interface at two different places with the same name and when the compilation will happen the TypeScript compiler will treat all this uh, declaration together and it will be treated as one single one. Let's say you are creating the interface one and then uh, writing few of the variables in that and the function declarations and again creating the same interface one at some other places and giving extra properties in that and extra some function declaration. But when the compilation will happen as the name of the both interfaces is same, it will be combined and treated as one single interface in the uh, JavaScript file. So this is uh, in combination with the JavaScript feature, the TypeScript try to use this and uh, at different level we can do the declaration merging. It, declaration merging, you can just uh, see this particular table at what are all the level the declaration merging can happen and at what particular uh, scope. So let's say here it is giving the namespace uh, declaration can be merged together on the namespace level here. The value of that also uh, is possible after that for the class. Uh, we can uh, perform the declaration merging on type level only, we, uh, type level, but not on the namespace level. We can also do for the value level. For enum also, we can go with the type, uh, type as well as value. For interface also, we can go with the type. Type analysis also, we can go. But for, for, for function, we can go on the value level declaration merging. So this is somewhat the advanced behavior of the TypeScript for the declaration merging. So in next lecture, we'll just see one of the examples with interfaces and classes and enum or type analysis, how the declaration merging is possible within one namespace. We'll start understanding declaration merging with interfaces. So let's try to create a quick example here for the declaration merging with interfaces. So I'll just create an interface called bank account here. That we have done earlier. Let's say this account, bank account, is having account number as a number, and uh, we'll also need account name here with of type string. Perfect. And uh, what I can do here, I can just create a object out of it by specifying I'm going to, going to follow the interface bank account for my data type and uh, as the bank account interface is saying you must have the account name and the number I'll give the respective values to it and complete the definition perfect so everything is working very much fine here we are having an interface we are having an object created with the type of interface bank account so if I create one more interface here like this, so let me just comment out this first. Let me add a multi-line comment. Okay, so I'm going to create one more interface here and I want to specify account uh, balance here. The type is string. And you can observe the same one I'm giving here, the interface name. The both interface are exactly having the same name, but having their different declarations in that. So what will happen in this case? So I'll just take a pause for a minute so that you can think on it, what will happen? So here, will it give us any error that, that the duplicate interface name something like that, or will it work? So you can just try it around. I'll take a pause for a minute so that you can do it. Let's try doing it together. So let me just uncomment this here and see. Very first thing, what we have observed here, line number eight, it's not complaining about anything. It is allowing a interface declaration with the same name which is already available on line number three. So it's perfectly allowed here. And this is what we call as declaration merging performed by TypeScript compiler. So it is having a two different interfaces with the same name. So what the TypeScript compiler is doing in background, it is combining these two declarations together and considering it as one single interface. So that's compiler is doing in background for us. And that's what the unique feature provided by the TypeScript for us. And here, if you see line number 12, it started complaining that this object creation is not following all the declarations given by bank account. And that's of course true. 
because right now only the number and name is not sufficient you also need to give the balance here so let's give here and even if you hover your cursor it will very clearly tell you the balance is remaining here so let's add the balance super perfect and if you see now everything is working fine and this is acting like a single interface and what happening in background let's also try to understand that that this is what happening in the background this we have written so in background the compiler is getting converted these two interfaces like this which is of course is a pretty simple one that we have done earlier let's try to play around it in a more detail so let's say in the second one we are having an account balance so if i again mention this account name here in the second one what will happen so my question to you is if i'm using the account name again in the second declaration that generally the TypeScript compiler merge together if I give again the same property in that what will happen I'll just take a pause on this so that you can think hope you got your answers so let me just uncomment this okay very first thing the TypeScript compiler is not complaining anything and here is also everything fine it means that if there are any duplications it will just simply ignore it and this is what the typescript behavior at the time of declaration merging we're just trying to understand how the declaration merging in uh, will happen in background in detail so okay so we have learned like if there are duplicate it will just ignore it so let me just remove this scenario for now and add a uh, function so that we can also confirm the functions will also get merged inside the Interf interface the function declaration so i'm specifying one more property here called debit and in this property i'm trying to give the declaration of the function here so the debit should have a functionality which accepts some input called amount which is of type number and this function will not return anything so return type i'm mentioning void here this is just a declaration if you clearly observe it it's not any definition it's just a declaration Let's do the same here and for the credit credit property I'm adding here some input will be there of number and again the return type we want to make, keep it as void to keep it simple. So both are having one one function. So of course when the declaration merging will happen both declaration will come at one interface and here the object creation started complaining. What is what it is saying it is saying that you must uh, perform the definition for debit and the credit which is made compulsory by the bank account because you're following the bank account standards here that's very perfect so let's do that so i want to create a function called debit which is accepting an input called amount and it will have some certain behavior so let's log and say debit successful just a dummy message we would like to print here and again the same thing should happen for credit as well and as soon as we do for credit so the object creation should be successful and the now object creation is successful so even though you are missing with one it won't happen now we are following all the things given in the declaration of bank account interface so this is how if there are two different functions both will get combined again the same thing let's say if i'm making a duplicate for this function here so it's still the same behavior that we have seen in the previous one but let's understand with a bit more example here so the debit can happen with one input so the debit function is having here with only one input if i give the multiple input here and here the single input input what will happen so these all scenario, scenarios you can keep trying and exploring what will happen because these all are the advanced behaviors that you might learn in a new scenario with that and of course it's an optional module so it's not much necessary to go in detail but it will help you to if you want to understand the compilation behavior in much more details so here we'll take a pause and uh, next uh, declaration merging we'll see in the next lecture i'll just drop this code in the uh, resource of this particular lecture so that you can download it if you want to give it a try and again of course it's an optional one so you can also leave it Let's understand the declaration merging with enums here. So 
Let's create a quick example here for the enums. And here we'll say, we'll use the enum for like HTTP status. And instead of HTTP status here, I would like to use something else like uh, error ports. Because we want to have some uh, automatic number initialization for the error codes here and to understand some more advanced behavior with declaration merging of the enum. So let's say this is the first error. I'll just keep giving the name like first, then second. And instead of numbers, more specific what we can say like uh, array, then uh, class. So instead of class, okay, class, and the next area is regarding uh, the index. Oh, that's fine. So we are having the three here. And uh, let me just do a console of error code dot array. So this is just the first error code that we are giving, and we know by default zero, one, two, three will be assigned. And if we just see the outcome here, so we should be getting that. We are having some difficulties here. Let me see if any code is remaining here. We should get this zero here, but we are getting some unexpected point here. I guess the compilation is having some issue. Let me just make sure the recompilation is happening very well. Okay, fine. I need to turn on the TypeScript watch. Perfect. Okay, we are getting the zero. Then if I go, uh, keep seeing the next error code. Okay, so this error is regarding array, this error is regarding class, whatever it could be. So we are getting zero, one, two that we know. So let's understand one important behavior here. And let's say in the one more declaration we are doing for the error codes here very first thing we should observe same like interface it is not giving any error at line number eight that duplicate identifier it is giving some error over here that we'll see separately but the first one we should understand the declaration merging is allowed for enums as a type okay then next is showing some error at line number nine so here i'll take a pause for a minute so that you can think on it why exactly it's giving error here and if you just hover your cursor it will also give you the very clear reason for this and we have also seen how to solve this problem, how to give the initialization for the uh, in a proper uh, in a values here so that this error will be resolved. So you should be able to solve this and then we'll try solving it together. I'll just take a pause for a minute here. Let's try to do it together. So what happens by default? It's giving zero, one. Why? Because it's a default initializer. The same is happening over here for index as well. But if you hover your cursor, it will very clearly tell you in an enum with multiple declaration, only one declaration can omit initializer for the first enum element. Very clearly it is saying that by default, these values will be assigned with zero, one. When you are doing that, what's happening for this particular line number nine also, it is giving equal to zero. So it is not correct to have a zero error code for array as well and for the index. So it is against the rules of the enums. Each and every value inside your enum must be unique so that we can perform the necessary operation based upon that uniqueness. But in this case, it is failing to do that. And this is what the default initialization will be done by the compiler. So if I just remove this, it will again start showing you the problem. And here is the, uh, the uh, we can use the initialization from our side. So let's say I'm giving the error code one here. This is error code two. And here I'm giving the error code three. In this case, we will not get any issues. And let's try to see, see it will give you the very correct enum values. One, two, three. Very perfect. In the similar way, we can also use the string related types. Let's make it array. Let's make it class here as a string. Let's make it as index. So it will also work super correct. So one quick question to you guys, if I remove the declaration part, uh, the initialization part for line number nine for this particular enum value, 
what will happen what will be the value at line number 14 i'll just take a quick pause so that you can do it and try on your own let's see what happens so i'll just remove this and what will be the value over here for index it is giving zero so if you just omit this declaration here so by default we, we are pretty sure what will happen to this index so it will just zero one two like this and that's the reason we are getting index equals to zero in the previous case that we have learned so we have given here zero then zero one we are giving for example and here it is not complaining because maybe it's taking some value but what will be the value in this case because zero we are already using it so will it start taking any other value apart from zero so let's see the outcome it's again again taking the zero so this is what the issues we are having with the declaration merging so when you are performing the declaration merging in any case so please make sure you will be giving all the initializers for your enum values because in this case both array and the indexes are having the zero value inside it which is not correct for any enum so hope you understand how the declaration merging will work in detail for the enum let's understand one quick difference between the type any and the unknown and in which scenario you should use the any and which scenario we should use the unknown and what's the core difference on the compiler level or maybe on the compilation when the compilation is happening so let's try to understand with example here uh, very first thing the core difference with unknown and any is uh, if you're performing any operation which is having an any type so it won't do any type checking when any operation is being performed on that but with the unknown type uh, it will uh, allow you to add some value to it but when any operation is performing on top of any variable which is having an unknown type so there the type checking happens and let's confirm with this example now so let's consider an example we are having a variable here called value and in this value let's say i'll just make it value one so that we can be much sure about it and the data type for this i'll mention any sounds good so it's a data type called any i can give any value here let's say i'm giving the value one two three or just a number let me just do a quick console to verify everything is working perfect yes i'm getting the one two three here uh, now here if i just try to mention like let i just want to see some results what happening here so the results one equals two in this particular value one i want to add number 10 here or maybe the plus one and then i want to see what will be the result for one very first thing you can observe line number six here value one plus one so this is any type we can give string also here we can give anything and then you're performing the plus operation so ideally it should not allow you right because instead of this number i can also give an object here i can also give a string boolean and then performing the plus one is not a good operation so this is what with any it is not doing any checking at the compile time if you're performing any operation which might not be supportable maybe in this case it is supporting but it may not support if you are giving any other value so let's save this and see the output so we are getting one to four because we are having a valid value in this case so if i just make it a string here in this case so it will start giving us an unexpected behavior here now so if you see it is just doing a concatenation let's do it more weird about it and let's say true value so we are just doing a true false so now it is happening true plus one it's very uh the in, in inaccurate operation here is happening we can say it's something boolean plus one it will it should give you some unexpected results here so with boolean true means one and it's again plus one it's happening too so it's a it's not a correct operation that we are doing so using any data type is very risky because it's not doing any validation when any operation on top of that we are performing let's try to do it more weird about it so let me just say here let the results two and let's try to make it value one dot two upper case and here let me just give a value one to three again so here it's a number let's forgot about this line number six and here it's a number it is still allowing you to use two uppercase which is a function that should be applied on a string 
So it should not be allowed here. If we are giving a string, then only it should allow. And let's see what we will get at the runtime here. So we are getting some runtime. Uh, our program is getting crashed and saying two uppercase is not a function, whatever it could be. And if I give the correct value, it will work very correctly in this case here. And we are not getting any errors. And if you just see the output also, it's very perfect. We are getting, and right now we are not having any two uppercase related functionality. Let's just try to make it a name here. It should work but it's not very correct when you are giving a number. So we have seen how the data type checking is skipped when you're performing some operation on a variable which is having a data type called any and how it is risky to use. So let's understand the same example with the data type called unknown. So let's quickly comment this option here and copy the same scenario or maybe let's do a rewrite here value one which is having a data type called known of course we can pass some value to it so let's pass it the value and here let the results one equals to value one plus one we are doing here okay and we just want to console what will be the result inside this very first thing it is started complaining us here what it is complaining this is an unknown data type i am not sure in this case it is one two three the results will come correctly but let's say if you have given anything different like this this will create runtime problems for us so here only ahead in compile time only it is started giving us some errors here you can also observe in our terminal here so it is complaining that in this case it might be a number but in next case it might be something different which will crash our program and even if you hover your cursor it is very clearly telling the value one is of type unknown so i'll not allow you to perform the plus operation on top of this and this is what we need a strip a strict data type checking so with unknown what we have learned here it will perform the data type checking when we are performing some operations on it it is not performing any data type checking when we are doing an assignment because it's an unknown type any data you can assign to it but it doesn't mean any operations you can perform it on it which will crash on runtime so what's the conclusion uh, here with the uh, comparison we did with the unknown and any if you want to have a strict data type checking when you're performing some operations on the variables so there you should use unknown uh, instead of any and if you don't want to perform any data type checking on your code then you should use the any so of course we should always try preferring unknown instead of using any because in any it might crash runtime and in unknown it might not crash uh, it will give you all the errors in the compile time itself but uh, it is restricting us let's say for example uh, when the number is coming here this operation should be allowed but apart from number when it is coming then only it should not allow us so uh, the TypeScript should allow us here. So with this unknown, if I just trying to perform this operation here, so it's a valid case here because it's a number, it should allow us. So what are the options TypeScript is providing you to do that? So if I use any here, it's not a good sign here because it's crashing in runtime. So with any data type, what you can do, so you can just say if condition, a type of the value one variable, if it is equals to a number, then you're allowed to perform this operation. And let's also put this console inside. So it's one of the very best option we have figured it out. We are using an unknown data type. You can give any value here. You can give a string, you can give anything here. And still you are able to perform the plus one operation and which will get executed only when the type is number. So if I'm giving a string, it will not go inside this and it will not crash my program. So this is how we are keeping our program more safe with respect to the data type and its operation. So let's try to give a number here, one, two, three. So it will go the inside here and perform this operation. Very perfect. And uh, let's try to give a string here. So in this case, it will not go inside this if statement. So let's add one more else if statement here to perform some operation when it's a string. So the data type of the value one 
when it is equals to a string so let's say i want to perform some operations on it the value one dot i want to make it to uppercase all the values which are present and i want to console it let's see the outcome yes we are getting it so we have performed some certain if else condition here in uh, the respective scenarios it will go to the respective if block and in this case with unknown we are making more type safe operation with different different data type and if you have any other data type apart from number and string so these things will not occur and the program will not crash so the final conclusion with unknown if you want to keep your program more safe with respect to the data types where the operations are performing use unknown we don't want to do that use any let's understand the quick difference between undefined and null so what are the differences and in which case we, sh we should use undefined and the null so the core convention here with undefined is that with typescript and the javascript is considered uh, the value is not present uh, and that may be by any mistake or maybe something or maybe the daddy or the value didn't came so the absence of a particular value can be uh, mentioned with undefined and uh, the, uh, with null data type it is being considered that it is being intentional that we don't want to give any data to you so it's an intentionally given uh, uh, the, the denial of input we can say so we don't want to give any input so there null will be used and if there is any by mistake any data is not coming or maybe any uh, operation is not performing or uh, giving any outcome maybe by any mistake or something or so that that is not intentional so there undefined is used so let's see with a quick example here so i'm writing a function here called display so yeah we can give some value to input as a display where we can pass null when, when, when we don't want to display anything and we might give a string or we might give any undefined where we want to display certain things so let's take input here and value then with the data type string and we just want to perform a simple console operation that's very perfect and here what i'm doing i'm just taking a variable called value and the data type called any here and i'm trying to assign value equals to hello let's call it display and give this value so it will work very correctly because it's a it is a taking a string it's a data type called any no problem and anyhow it's a string so it is getting assigned here to the string and we are uh, displaying it so it should be working fine yes and now if i want to give here a null or maybe undefined maybe by mistakely we don't have any value inside this to be given uh, to this display function so what will happen in that case so let's say uh, we don't want to uh, give anything to display so we can pass a direct null here so in this case if you see the uh, it is showing the value present inside this variable is null and let's do not do anything let's say we have forgot to give the value inside this particular variable so in the absence of this line still it will work so right now there is nothing inside the value that we forgot to give some value inside this variable and still we are giving this variable here so what will be the data type or what will be the value present inside this variable so in this case it will be undefined so here we should understand the difference we forgot to give some value inside our variable so in that case it is showing undefined there is nothing uh, present here maybe the user by mistake forgot it to give and when we are giving intentionally null so the user intention here is that you don't want to display anything and that's the reason he intentionally he given null value here and in this case the data type will be different that will be null so let's try to also give some if else condition here so that we can more appropriately display on the screen to the user so let's say type type of the value is string it means user given some value and we need to display that so it's perfect so user provided something user provided value and in the next line we are displaying that value here so let's give some input value here called hello and see the outcome 
So it is saying that user provided some value and the value is hello. Super perfect. In the next case, let's say user saying null. So user is saying that I don't want to display anything on the screen. I don't have any data. So in this case, it will not go inside the if statement because we are checking it with the type. And if you just see the outcome, we will not get anything here. So in this case also, let's display on the screen, like at least user don't want to display anything. So else if we can say here, the type of the value, if it is undefined, if it is undefined, so let's do a quick console here and say user don't want to display anything let's see the outcome now i guess we are missing something yeah this is with undefined right so let's forgot line number 13 here remove it so this time we forgot to give some value so uh user instead of user forgot value maybe let's see the outcome yes it's very clearly saying that and that's that's what happening here we don't have any value present inside this variable and let's say in the last case and where this value is equals to equals to null in this case i'm not checking the type because i just want to check the null value here so that we can check with the triple equal to operator directly with the value variable itself parameter and in this case we can mention here user don't want to display anything so this is user choice in this case user intentionally saying that i don't want to display anything and how the user will say that maybe the value is equals to null and that's the difference between the null and the undefined so let's see the outcome Yes. So hope you understand understood the difference between undefined and the null. So undefined is saying that I may forgot to give some value or maybe the value is not present with me with me right now to give you. And with the null value, we are intentionally saying that we don't want to give you the value. What is definitely type and what's its use? So uh, we have seen there is a large ecosystem for the JavaScript. So there are many libraries and the frameworks which are already written in the JavaScript. So the TypeScript is came newly. So of course, it will not have the strong ecosystem like the JavaScript uh, script and the strong uh, library support that is already present with the JavaScript. So we need some way in between uh, we can use the JavaScript inside our TypeScript. So we have something called as declaration files in which uh, the declaration files and the mapping file so in which we can get to know the types present inside the javascript so let's say if there is any library written something called as jquery so the J jquery is written in the javascript so if you want to use the jquery or maybe the express library is there which is a well-known library for the backend rest api creation so that's completely written in the javascript so you don't have any uh, anything regarding its data type because that's in javascript and when you're trying to use in the TypeScript, so there is a highly possible chances you will uh, you will get runtime issues with the data types and it will not allow you to use all the operations which are present in the express library written in the JavaScript. So you need compulsory uh, compulsorily the declaration file in which all the variables, all the classes, all the interface and all the declarations with their data types will be written inside a declaration that we called d.ts file and that we have also seen in our advanced compilation module where we have seen a flag called declaration file and the declaration maps. So it means to use any particular JavaScript library that can be anything express, jQuery or maybe any other library Lodash, any other library which is written in the JavaScript, you must need a declaration file for that to use it. So of course the respective the library will not assure you that they will provide you the d.ts file, the declaration file. Let's say the jQuery community, let's say the Express community, they will definitely provide you this declaration file. It is completely their choice, either they want to provide or not. It depends on them. So there is a separate community called definitely typed, 
which will take care of all this thing. So what they do, they create only the declaration files for all of these libraries like Express, jQuery. So that they, you can reuse all the libraries which are given in the J, uh, JavaScript directly inside your TypeScript. So all the non-typed NPM packages, they, convert, they, they write the uh, d.ts file for them and give us the declaration files. And that is something called as definitely typed community. Uh, I'll just give you one of the example for that. Let's go to the NPM here. And if you just search for at the rate types, so these are all the list of uh, libraries that they have already given you. There are more than uh, 400 libraries they have given us the declaration file. It means it is opening the doors to use these highly used more than 400 JavaScript libraries directly inside your TypeScript. So they have written for, they have given here for Node, they have given for React, which is one of the well-known one, then for Express one. So this Express is basically written in the JavaScript. So when we are using the declaration files using at the rate type slash Express, we are, can also write the backend code uh, which in the Express framework completely inside the TypeScript. And let's also try to go in more details about it. So let me open this library here. This is type Express. And uh, I just want to show you what exactly they are writing in these files these are the scripts okay these are the javascript scripts i want to show you the declaration files that they are writing give me a second let me just reopen it for the express one Okay, I'm not able to figure it out exactly the d.ts file. Let me just try to do it with any one of the other one. Let's say with React. They should be providing you the d.ts file. Yes. So let me just go back and show you for Express only. So in this particular Express, if I go here and just see what exactly the declaration files they provided us, so if I go to the repository here, something called types folder, and uh, these are all the detailed functionalities inside the express library. Let me just open one of it like absolute. And here you can see the d.ts file. So they are providing us these declaration files and using which we can use all these libraries completely inside our TypeScript. So hope you understood how, how, how exactly the definitely type community help us to uh, use all the uh, already available JavaScript libraries inside our TypeScript. Let's see how the TypeScript uh, new updates will come up and how we should be getting more out of it and how should not be much worried about the TypeScript version that we are using because there is no much difference with the different TypeScript versions. Very first thing, come, uh, come back to our terminal. Let's see which version of the TypeScript using. So we are using the version called 4.4.4. That this is the one that I'm using at the time of recording, which I found one of the stable one while recording this and the contents are mo more specific for that. So if you just go to the official website of the TypeScript, there is something called handbook here. And uh, let me just confirm. Yeah, it's in handbook. There is something called what's new section here. So it is giving you the latest stable version of the TypeScript. So the latest stable is the 5.1 and we are using the 4.4. Of course, it will not create you create the much differences. And uh, why we are seeing this lecture here, how we can understand what are the new features are coming and with an example, how we can just go through with the, this documentation. This will be very useful because whenever you are appearing for any interviews or whenever you are appearing for any examination, so people might ask you which version of the TypeScript that you have learned and which is going latest, what are the new features are coming with that. And you should be able to elaborate how the different versions coming up with new solutions and what problem it is solving with respect to the previous. And again, remember, all the TypeScript new versions will come for the performance improvement, the more advanced compilation behavior, and to keep your TypeScript more and more data safe. So let me just navigate you the version 4.4 to discuss about one of the new feature 
and uh, options came in the 4.4. So in 4.4, the very first thing that they introduced, the control flow analysis of allies, conditions and discriminants. So what it means and how it works. So they have given one very quick example here and let me just copy this code here so that we can understand this in more detail. So we have written something here. Let's remove it. Okay. And let me just keep it as it is, whatever we have uh, done. So here's a quick function here, which is taking some argument of data type unknown. We have seen in very much detail what exactly the unknown and what's the difference between with other uh, as compared to the unknown one. So it is saying unknown here. It means we can give any data type here. That's perfectly fine. But the two uppercase function is getting executed only when there is a string here. So we are not mentioning it is a string over here, right? So how the compiler is identifying here ahead. So even though you are giving a unknown here, uh, let me just call the same function here with integer. It is allowed because the data type is unknown. The same function call is also allowed with a string here. But in the second case only, it is going on the line number four where we are performing to uppercase. So how exactly it is not giving us an error in the first case here due to just due to this line number three. So in TypeScript 4.4, they have introduced a new option called control flow analysis. So in which the TypeScript compiler not only check the data type, it will also check the way of the control flow you are writing. If you have written an if statement here, the way as a developer you are understanding even if it's an unknown, but it will go on line number four only when it's a string. The same way this new feature in the TypeScript is allowed in which this control flow analysis is happening for the analyze type. And the TypeScript is able to understand it will come up here only when it's a string. Let me make it a number here and let's see it will give you the error here. So with this TypeScript again understanding not only from this line, it is also analyzing this flow of if statement and it is saying you it is not allowed on the data type called number. So in this way, we the type C version 4.4 is solving one more, one more new problem which uh, where the data type can differ in different flow. So this is one of the advanced behavior added in type 4.4. In the similar way, they have also given other examples and the more things that that are coming up here. So this documentation is very much helpful. We have just discussed one example here. You can just try any other example. Just try to understand in detail how it works. If you are not understanding with one example, let's try to go to another source, another website and try to understand with similar example. So maybe they have uh, explained you in some different way. So there you might be understanding because sometimes in the official document documentation, they might give you a very complicated example. So if you search the similar uh, version on the different website, they might explain you with a simpler example. So at the end, it's always uh, the, the final intention is to understand how that concept works. And this is completely optional, but it is always better to know what new things are coming in the newer versions. Let's understand a quick difference between the iteration of for of syntax and the for in syntax with a quick small example. So let there is an array in which there are values 10, 20, 30 and we just want to quickly console it on the screen. So there are two syntaxes which are available here that is for off and for in. So let me just navigate for off here. So let me say if let value of array and do a quick console here. Okay, so it is let value of an array so it is going with each and every value number 10 will come up then 20 and 30 and then we are just consoling it so let's see the outcome we are getting 10 20 30 that's very perfect and let's say for let value in and then i'm consoling it so i'll just take a quick pause here so that you can understand here or you can be ready with your answers what will be the consoles here in this case so what will be the values present inside this variable in each iteration that is important to understand. So let me just console this. Then I'll just take a pause for a minute so that you can think on it. Yes, 
So let's see what will be here. So we are getting 0, 1, 2. So we are getting these array indexes. So when we are using this in keyword here, it is saying that just navigate or iterate through the array indexes 0, 1, 2, whatever it could be up to the last index. So it should not be value here, it should be index. So we can use any because it's just a variable name here. So we can use any variable name, but it is better to use index in this case. And let's just say index. Let's see the outcome. It will be exactly the same. And if, you, and if you want to print the value present inside that index, so of course we need to mention array of that particular index here. Let's see the outcome. Yes. And if I just uncomment the previous one, the both will give you the similar outcomes. Yes. So what we understood the difference here in the foreign, it will give it is giving you the index, and the with for off, it is giving you the exact value in that particular array element. Hash prefix uh, class members. So let's see how it's used and what's uh, in which cases we can use it. So to just prefix uh, the access specifier instead of writing the private, we can use a hash to indicate it's a private member of a class. So generally we have written the classes with private members in that. So let's see the account name here, which is a type string, for example, and uh, the account balance I'll use, which is of type number. And let's do a quick initialization here itself so that we'll not get these initialization error. So by default, these properties are the public one that we have seen already. So let's quickly initialize an object out of it and try to access this value. So of course we can access this values dot account balance equals to we can make it anything which should not be allowed. So you just want to keep it private. So what we have done earlier, we have did it in this way. So now it's a private member of my class and you cannot access it directly. Either you need to write, write the getter and, get and setter and write some validation how you're going to change the balance or maybe some credit or debit functionality which will affect or change this balance. And instead of this private here in the new versions of the TypeScript or the JavaScript, they have given you a new shortcut called hash here. So with hash, I can make this particular member of my class as private. So it's giving me some error here, like say is declared, but its value is never used. So it is not treating this particular hash variable with a special symbol, which is converting this as a private member because it's a new feature introduced in the ES6 version onwards of the JavaScript. So I need to open my TS config file and I need to make sure I'm targeting to the ES6 version. Again, I request you be very careful while changing this file. So for temporarily, I'm making it ES6 and let's come back to the script.ts file and now it is allowing me to use that. And now it's an equivalent to the private one. And if I just go here and hover my cursor, so it will say like, it is saying that I'm not uh, like, uh, we are not uh, allowed to use it. And it's a private one. Of course, we can use some with other method. Let's say, let's make it credit a private function I want to create and uh, give some amount as input to it and here if I say this dot account balance one second and here if I just mention this dot account balance equals to or we can say plus equals to the amount okay so here also a weird syntax you might figure it out it is here also you need to write as an hash prefix and you and you can confirm you are not even able to use it outside one even if you write the hash keyword here that's perfect and uh, let's write some function here called get balance because we also want to see the balance is getting updated which is returning hash account balance to us so what we understood here whenever we are trying to use it inside of a class itself we have to mention hash so with this one more new uh, uh, concept we can see whenever we are using this variable itself by this symbol we can identify it's a private property let's imagine in the old-fashioned way if you are just writing a private something like this so when you are using it 
you cannot identify it's a private one or it's a public one you need to go back to see its declaration how exactly it's declared because you're inside of the class it's everything is accessible for you so with this particular hash now we are you are pretty sure inside of your class as well on this line itself this is a private member you not even need to go here and see in much detail so it's also giving a developer a more comfort you may not feel this comfort at this particular stage but there is a large application when this classes is being provided by maybe from other third party maybe any other library or maybe other your co-worker when you are building the functionalities in your team so this will be very helpful to understand and uh, immediately identify it's a private member of a class so let's see the outcome now here so of course we cannot see this here uh, we cannot assign a value it's a private one let's do a quick console count one dot get balance of course it will be zero initially then let's use of credit functionality let's create it 100 here and again do a quick console for the get balance anything wrong i'm writing here no fine let's see the outcome yes initially it's a zero one and then it's a hundred one so this is how we are using a new one that is hash for a private of course we can use this for a uh, mem uh, for a method as well and for any other thing uh, inside a class you can use it for static as well you can use for non-static normal uh, property normal methods and everything feel free to explore this option in the more advanced documentation and you might be start seeing these hash keywords in the new libraries or maybe the new functionalities which are coming with the es6 version from now onwards Let's understand the role of the TypeScript in Angular and the front-end technologies. Very first thing, what is Angular and how the TypeScript play a very good role in that? So Angular is an advanced front-end framework which is used to build the great complex applications in the front-end. So it takes help of the HTML, it takes help of Java, uh, TypeScript, JavaScript, CSS and few other things and it combines all these things together and build a great framework for front-end development that is Angular. So in Angular for all the scripting related activities, so to perform all the scripting related tasks, your FLS logic, calling the data from the REST API, background, backend database and everything, the coding is done in the TypeScript and it plays a very big role in Angular. And to do the display things for uh, the front end like HTML and the CSS are used just to represent the data on the screen. But the actual operations, the logical activities, the business logic is being implemented in the TypeScript. So in this particular module, we will see how to install an Angular, how to create a demo application and how to uh, see what are the activities the TypeScript can perform inside Angular. We'll also learn the integration of TypeScript with the Angular, the TS config file and the different configurations available in detail with a very good example. So let's quickly begin the new module TypeScript in Angular. Let's begin the Angular installation. So we are on the official website for the Angular here, the angular.io. So here if you just navigate to the docs, then set up here inside the get started one setup it will give you the setup or how you can do a local setup for the angular what are the dependencies are required and the steps for the installation so very first thing it is saying that you should be having a knowledge of javascript html and css yes it is needed along with that it is also stating that the typescript knowledge is it, it will be helpful but it is not required because we know the TypeScript is a superset for the JavaScript. So if you're aware of the JavaScript, writing the code in the TypeScript will not be a big problem. But if you want to use the advanced things, you must be knowing TypeScript. And we have already learned the TypeScript. So we'll see how the TypeScript is implemented in Angular. Initially, we re uh, require the Node.js and the NPM package manager. So we have already these two things installed when we have done the initial setup for our TypeScript, but still will confirm. So it is stating that we should be having a node installed. So you can just check with node hyphen hyphen version and it will be compulsorily installed at your location because at the initial stage when we have done the TypeScript compiler installation, we did all this uh, installation. 
so this you should confirm and if there is any problem in this node version if you are not able to see this node version for you the node version can be anything else that's not a big trouble uh, if you are not getting this node version so you have to perform a node installation from an official website of node node.js.org and please make sure to download the latest LTS version and do not use the current one use the stable one okay after that once you are done with that installation you should be able to see this version if you are not able to see the troubleshooting steps you can just google it out or the general troubleshooting steps are you need to restart your VS code that's the first step otherwise you may need to restart your machine system as well if that is also not solving the problem you have to check it on the stack overflow and more options with whatever the system level problems or the issues are happening but at the end you should be getting this successfully the next thing you should confirm npm version and uh, this will be compulsorily uh, it will be compulsorily present at your location if node is working because it's a part of the node installation itself so both are here uh, ready for me so i'll just quickly start the angular installation so if we just move forward here it is giving us a command to install the angular so let's copy this command here and paste it so very simply it is saying that it's an npm install we are trying to install globally hyphen g and then at the rate angular angular slash cli so there's a detail it's a very detailed framework we are not going to in much detail what exactly this slash cli and everything so all together we can say we are performing an angular installation as of now it may ask you a couple of questions when you're doing it and for me it's already installed so it will not take much time it is just checking uh, the latest versions and everything so it might take around uh, three to four minutes if your internet connection is good or maybe it will take more time so it started giving some issues here yes of course so it is giving the permission denied and if you're doing it in the macbook so you may need to use the command called sudo in front of it to give the admin permission and if you're using the windows the appropriately windows related uh, operation you need to do maybe it will give you a prompt to give the admin access let it complete yes so for me it's super simple it's done super fast because already i just now updated before recording this section and once i'm done with this installation i can say ng version what is this ng ng stands for angular and please make sure here we shouldn't use hyphen hyphen you just need to mention ng version so let's see we should get the latest version so i'm getting the latest version 16 for my angular here for you the angular version can be something different based upon the uh, the version is available when you are trying this particular assignment so the angular installation is also successful for us so the next step is to create the first project that we are going to see in the next lecture let's start creating the angular project so we have a command to create an angular project and when we do that it will ask us a couple of questions what will be your project name uh, what is the type of project you are creating and then what are the dependencies you want to use few more things it will ask regarding the angular so here we will not go in much details about it because we just want to create a dummy project and understand the role of the typescript in that if you want to learn typescript so separately you should be learning a typescript in a separate different course because that's a huge topic so we'll more focus on how typescript is playing a big role in the angular project here so to create a project here i just need to mention ng new and the my project name so it's super simple ng stands for angular new project and the project name let's hit enter it's asking me would you like to add angular routing i'll say no because i want to create a super simple angular project as of now which style of the format would you like to use so i'll select the by default one i just need to hit enter here do not select anything new because it will give you some more different configuration which are not necessary now so what if the default is there css let it be at and hit the end button it will take it one or two minutes of time based upon the processing speed because it will download and keep ready all the dependencies for the angular and angular is a very big framework so it will gather thousands of libraries which are required from the html css javascript typescript and many more 
So it might take some time and as soon as it is completed, you can see it is showing us our project folder that is my app here. So very first thing, if I'm opening this my app folder, it is giving me the bunch of files and the folders which consist of my first Angular project. Before doing all these activities, I just want to compile and run my Angular application and see the output first to make sure my project creation is successful. Then we'll go in much detail about this hierarchy where the TypeScript we are using and the TypeScript configuration file, .json file and many more. To run this project, I just need, uh, firstly, I should be inside my project. If you are clearly observing, I'm inside the folder called Udemy project and you can see here, but I should be inside my project. The name of my project is my app. So I'll say CD, my app. Now the terminal is inside my project. So now I can say ng serve. What is this ng serve? It is a command to compile and run your application locally on your machine. So it will give you the localhost address, localhost colon 4200 port to see your Angular output. So ng here, the Angular and the serve is a command. Let's hit enter. It might ask you a couple of questions here initially. Would you like to give any uh, data sharing and everything? You can just hit no here and proceed. It will take some time initially when you are doing it first time because it will uh, uh, compile all the libraries which are present. And when you do it second time, it is in a watch mode. So that time it won't take any big time. So let's see the outcome here. So here is the output localhost 4200 and this is my first angular project that we have created so uh, it is giving it, it by default consists of few things that's the reason we are able to see some output with a uh, blue background here some logo some text a small beautiful animation here if we click on that some more new things are opening so it is just navigating and giving a links to the different uh, new pages here but overall it is just giving us a default content let's try to understand one, uh, one very interesting thing here, HTML uh, index.html. So let me just navigate you inside index.html file. So in this particular index.html file, if you clearly observe this entire project, this entire project is this one. Only the line, uh, the 13 lines of code. If you clearly observe, even if you right click here, and do the peer view page source, it will just give you these 13 lines. That's it. So now let's see the power of TypeScript here. The line number 11, it is showing us app root. It is something unexpected. Maybe you're seeing the first time if you are a back from a background of HTML, it is not a known element something. We have seen an element called body, h1, passage, table. These are the tags and many more elements there, there are, but there is no element or any tag with the name app root. So this app root is being created by this particular Angular project and inside this app root, the whole project is there. And that's the reason when you are doing a right click and saying view page source, it is just giving you these many lines of code. After that, one more interesting interesting thing it is also giving many javascript files here dot js dot js dot js let's try to open this dot js file so it is having a bunch of lines of code that is looks a very critical here and not that much readable so what we are we are able to understand out of this when we are compiling our angular project what are the javascript html and every other code we are writing that is getting converted to the javascript and that's the reason when we are seeing the output the output is having the HTML and the JavaScript only. There is nothing called TypeScript here. We'll see in more detail in the upcoming lecture, where is the TypeScript here? What we mean by components and we'll also try to create few more components and try playing it around and create a small little application in the next lecture. A quick note to you how to download this source code in case if you need it and how to run the project. It is exactly similar the way you are doing till now for your TypeScript project. Still, I'll give you the steps again. So in the lecture, the corresponding lecture, you will be able to see one zip file with the current project in within that particular lecture. You can just download this zip file from the Udemy in that particular lecture section. Once you do the download, if you do the unzip, 
you should be able to see the folder structure like this. If you are seeing this folder structure, you need to open in the VS Code and you must be navigating inside your project name. Let's say uh, my project name is my app in this case and uh, my terminal is inside Udemy project and if I just hit ng serve here, so I'll get an error here. What is the error? This command is not available when running the Angular CLI outside the workspace because we are not inside the project, we are not inside a workspace that we created, we are outside of it. So we are we should be inside my app here. So my app and now I say ng serve command so it will compile and run my application. I'll not do in this case because my project is already running over here. So this is the way to download this zip file from the resource of the lecture and run it in case only when you need it. The next lecture is Angular Components and the TypeScript usage in that. So the Angular Component, what we mean by Angular Component and what are the uh, building blocks in that. So let me just navigate you to one of the great uh, theme here which is looking very great here. This is one of the sample theme I just uh, randomly uh, I was checking on the Google. Uh, so it's a good example here where I can elaborate you. So let's see if this is the uh, website you need to create inside an Angular project. So this we have already seen inside one of the example where how to use the decorator in an angular way. So we tried the same example and here also we, we will try to create a same small example to just display this revenue, orders, customers and the product views in a similar way that is uh, visible here. So we are able to see this total revenue. This is a separate box. Then one more box is orders and the third one is this and the fourth one is this. So these all four boxes are completely independent from each other. The working of that, how they are getting displayed and everything, all those four are just getting displayed at one particular place. So all these particular building blocks that we are able to see, let's say this particular, these are the four different blocks. So this each and every block we can say as a component inside Angular. So if I want to create this dashboard and I want to display these four boxes, I'll say I need to create four different components inside my Angular project. My first component will be total revenue, second component will be orders, third component will be product and the fourth comp component will be customer. In Angular component, each component will have some set of files. It will have an HTML file to represent this on the screen like this is a heading, then it's a one more heading with a bold effect. This is one more uh, here with a green color effect here. So these all HTML data we need to display, right? So each and every component will have one HTML file. Again, this data we need to download from the backend and uh, we need to get it from our REST API call and everything. So we also need to write some logical activities for this. So that behavior you need to write inside the TypeScript that we have learned till now. So the second file which is most needed inside a component is a TypeScript. The third file which is an optional that is a CSS file. To give extra effects and everything for your component, you need a CSS to give colors, animation, the way you are able to see here. This is a green color, this is a gray color, this is a complete black color. So you need a CSS. And the last file is optional, that is a testing file. So once you created this component, you will be also keep testing it. So you can separately create a test cases for this particular component inside a test file. So these are the four files required to create a component inside Angular. So I hope you understood now what we mean by component inside an Angular. If you go to the official documents and try to read out all the detail thing, it might look a difficult, but it's super sim simple. All the things that you are able to see on the screen of an Angular project, you can divide in a uh, component. Let's say this is my first component, this is second, this is third, this is fourth. This, this, this can be also the fifth one where the graph is displayed, the complete right side which is visible here, this we can create the sixth one and all. And again here, this will be different, different components we can create. But we are just talking about creating these four components as of now. And in, in each and every component, as we have seen, there will be four files. One is HTML to display this data. Second is the TypeScript file to have a behavior to, to write some logical activities like getting data, performing some calculation and everything. The third file is CSS to give some CSS coloring and animation effect. The fourth file optional. And, uh, to write some test cases to test the component independently. The core intention of behind Angular is 
to write a complex big application much faster and in independent way. Why I'm saying in, in an independent way? As I told you, all these small small things we can divide in components. Let's say one of the component failed, the revenue component failed. It won't affect any way your orders component, it will, won't affect any way other components. So this uh, uh, behavior will help us to create a big application with much faster and multiple people can coordinate on the same project very well. So now in next lecture, we'll try to create uh, these compo four components and we'll try to play around different files. So as we have learned in the previous lecture, the complete Angular output and your complete screen output is being divided inside blocks, building blocks and that we call as component. Each and everything is a component here. The top side menu you are able to see this is a component. This is one more drop down you are able to see that's a component. This black color menu you are able to see that's also a component. So each and everything here is a component and you need at least one component to create the Angular project. So we have created one default project here. So this is also a, uh, one component present here. So let's see in code what are all the things it covers in one component. So inside our project here, so if you clearly observe here, there is something called app root inside our index.html file. And this is our first component and this is called as root component, which is covering entire project. Inside this component, we are going to create multiple components. So where is the code, where is the HTML, where is the CSS, where is the TypeScript, where is the testing file for our component because we just now learned the component will have four different files. So if you navigate inside a source folder and there is something called app folder and this app folder consists of your CSS file, your HTML file, your testing file and your TS file. So this is the four different files and one more extra file is there, it's a module file that's a different thing and we'll try to cover it, uh, cover this in the next lecture, the module file. So as we have seen, like uh, the complete data on this particular screen is just one component in our case. So for complete, all this HTML code is written over here. If you just want to see it, you can just remove all of this, which is present inside app component HTML, the HTML file of our root component, you can just say hello. As soon as I'm saving my code, you can you should be able to see the compilation is happening automatically. So here you can relate your knowledge. We were using the TypeScript watch. So it is similar to that. And we don't need to do anything for that because everything is automated here. So I'm also able to see the output automatically and I'm able to see just hello. That's super perfect. So it means we identify first identified the first component which is being created automatically for us. Next. So in the next one, there is a TS file, TypeScript. So what is TypeScript file is doing here? It is doing the logical activities like the storing the data uh, temporarily on this, which is needed to display on the screen, getting the data from the backend using REST API, all those activities, logical activities, your business logic, we can do it inside a TypeScript file. Again, we'll see in detail how this decorator we are using, what's the role of this class in terms of the TypeScript, how this decorator is being used to connect your HTML file with the C, uh, TS in detail, we'll see. So before that, there is one more file called CSS. So this CSS file is also attached here. And just to show you an example, here we are doing a hello, right? So uh, I'll just add some background color here to this hello so that we can confirm it's getting affected here. It's not working. It's an H1. Yeah, so we are not using any tag here. Let me write it inside an H1. Yes, it means whatever the CSS code I'm writing inside my CSS file of the component, it is getting reflected in the HTML of the same component. Now, it's very interesting to understand in a single component, how the separate DSS file, how the separate CSS file, how the separate HTML file and the separate TypeScript file is all combined together and acting like a component for us. You can very clearly see here, there is no connection here for this HTML file and the CSS file, but still both are working in connection with each other. Generally, we need to write the script source and this CSS is getting connected here. We used to write it previously, right? But in this case, there is no connection we are able to see. So how these files are getting connected? Again, how this file is getting connected with the TS file? 
So that's the magic present inside our decorator here. So let's try to understand what is this class. So this class is saying that I'm just a class. The name is app component. So I'm re representing the app component class. I'm just a normal class. Who is converting this normal class to a component class? That role is being played by our special decorator given by the Angular called component. So this particular component decorator is enhancing the functionalities of our class. That's the reason it is acting like a component in terms of Angular. That's the reason this CSS file and HTML are combined together and also this particular types we find. And you can also able to see some inputs our decorator is accepting. And why our decorator, decorator is able to accept some inputs? Because we are calling the decorator factory. If you remember, we used to write something like this for trim and the user confirmation decorator and everything. So it is also calling a decorator factory, which is accepting some inputs here to perform some execution for your decorator. And this is the way a normal class is getting converted to a special component using our decorator. And it, you, if you clearly observe here, it is giving the path of the HTML, it is giving the path of the CSS. So it is combining all this file together and converting this class as a component and we are getting a great output out of it called component. So let's try to create in the next lecture four different components to, uh, using which we can display the total revenue, orders, customers and the product views. Before creating the component, let's understand which is the best place to display that inside our HTML files. So we have seen some HTML file here where we were displaying or uh, adding the hook for our root component to get displayed because finally this HTML output is getting displayed on the screen and inside body we have mentioned our app root component. So we are discussing about displaying these four different new components called revenue, orders, product and customers. So here, can we do that or will it be good to do? No, because it's a separate HTML file in which only one root component should be present, ideally as per the Angular standards. If you want to create more components and display more components which are required for your business application, so you should be doing in that inside a root component. Of course, inside one component, we can create any number of component in a nested fashion. So I'll go inside my root component HTML here and I'm able to see hello here. So here I can create those four different components and I can keep displaying here. So as in this way, we can do it in nested. So to display this output, so I'll just uh, try to create these four components and firstly, I'll create some space for that. And I'll just remove this red color here, which is not looking that much great. Let me just change this color a little bit here. Let me save this, I guess. Let's make it a bit more lighter. Okay. It's looking a little bit. Okay, now fine. And it's not looking great, but let it be for now. So I need to create a space here to display those four components. So let's quickly create a table, a TR and a TD inside it. And the first one, the first I need for a revenue. Then I need it for orders. Again, we need one more T TR. Then TD. And here we can display, I guess, uh, the product and the customers. So here we can say the product views and customers okay so we have created some space here in our uh, app root html file where we can display these components and it's uh, looking good let's create a, a little bit more good spacing here so style let's occupy the 40 percent of the width of the screen or yeah 40 percent will be good in this case and for this particular TD also, let's create some spacing here. I'm occupying the 50% of the area for the revenue, 50% area for the orders. 
again the same thing here and the same thing here and let's also apply some borders here border like one pixel will make it solid it's completely optional but it's better to do so that we can see the clear outcome it's really good here so now instead of this particular just revenue a single word the complete component i want to display where i can have all these details like image and everything and title the value and few more other options here so let's try to do that so to create the first component you should be going inside your terminal so for you already the terminal will be visible where your project is running already we should not stop that otherwise you will not be able to see the output over here when you refresh your screen so you should be creating a new terminal either from here or from here and here you need to make sure you are inside your project called my app in this case for you it might be a different one so here you need to say ng angular G stands for generate, C starts for, uh, stands for component and my first component name is revenue. As soon as I hit enter button here, you can observe it is saying that the four different new files are created and one more uh, file is updated that is module file. So what are the four files created? The CSS one, the HTML one, the spec.ts means the testing one and the TS file. And even in the folder structure, if you observe here, a new folder inside the app folder got created called revenue in which I'm able to see my CSS file, my HTML file and the TS file and the spec file. And everything is similar that we have seen for the app root component as well. So in this particular HTML file, it is saying revenue works. It means it, it is able to display that. Sounds good. And as we discussed inside our HTML file of the root component here we'll try to display our revenue component so let's try to do that I need to mention app revenue here and how I'm exactly specifying this name you can also copy this name from the revenue TS file there is something called as selector how we can select this particular component to display in other HTML file so from there you can get this name Let's save this and see the output. So it is showing revenue works. It means we got a dedicated place, a dedicated HTML file, the CTS file, a dedicated component where we can completely work for this particular revenue. And you can see the similar kind of thing is visible here. So this is having a great UI, but we are just going with a uh, simple one. So it might not look that great in this case, but the functionality point of view, we are almost similar to the example that we have seen. So here, let's try to display the HTML uh, output in a more good fashion. So we'll create a heading here called revenue. And then we'll also create one more heading here, which is displaying some revenue amount. Let's say, for example, one, two, three, or the exact one we'll try to do. This is 750. So let's say, 750 is shown in million then let's add a dollar symbol here like this okay let's see the outcome so we are displaying in this way after that we are displaying this 750 value inside our html this is not a correct way because this value is going to come up from the database from our backend server maybe so we have a separate ts file here which is responsible to get that values from the REST API, database or whatever it could be. And then we should be displaying inside an HTML file. File Inside a component, each and every file have some certain responsibility. The HTML file have a responsibility to display the things in a correct way. The CSS file is having a responsibility to display the files in a nicer way with CSS effects. And the TS file is having a responsibility to perform the logical operation over here. So this 750 is coming from the REST API, for example. So very first thing, we should have a variable here. So let's create a variable here called revenue, for example, which is of number. And here I'll mention the amount called 750. So instead of displaying directly here, I'm keeping that value over here. And now using this variable, I can write some logic here to get this value from the database or the REST API. And once that is done, I'll just store that value over here inside my variable called revenue. And let so right now we are not going to write a logic to get this data from the REST API and everything. But we can just consider that we, we, we can do that when you learn Angular and everything. 
as soon as you are done and with the value is ready inside this variable you can directly use this variable inside the html how so instead of this 750 i'll just mention opening curly brackets closing curly brackets and in between remaining let me apply a prettier here so this is a way i'm making use of a variable to directly display inside my html and let's see the outcome now super correct let's go back to the ts file and let's make it 751 i don't need to do anything inside my html file and the output is getting changed because we are using the same variable here to get displayed and now if the database is giving some different value so of course your html will be keep changing and you don't need to change a single line of code inside the html file so all this variable connectivity with html and everything the angular framework is doing in a great uh, fashion by using decorators and many more functionalities of typescript combining with javascript combining with html combining with css and this helps to create the bigger application the more complex application in a more simple fashion so hope you understood how to create a component and how these all linking works let's quickly try to create the remaining three components called orders product views and the customers in the next lecture time to create the remaining three components so we'll start with this order components here so in a similar way we can do ng generate component called orders here let's hit enter it will again give you the four different files created here and a new folder got created orders and let's try to do something inside our orders component before doing anything i'll just go to the html file of root component again here and i'll mention here i want to display orders component at this place again how we are i'm getting this exact name selector if you go to ts file you can see here let's see the output we should able to see order works here so let's add more html and the ts inside our orders component and here we'll try to display the orders heading then we should display how many orders we are having so what i can do i can just go to the revenue and copy the same html pattern put it over here and here i'll give the heading called orders and here i'll also use some orders variables here this m and dollars are not necessary here and inside my ts file now i'll again try to keep one variable called orders so i can calculate how many orders are there and let's say the number of orders are eight six eight four so six eight four perfect and let's use this variable inside our html over here so this is called as string interpolation this syntax this is called string interpolation let's save the files and see the output yes we are able to display the second component let's quickly create the third one and the fourth one so i'll just take a quick pause here so that you can do on your own the third and the fourth component which is similar for this hope it worked for you let's do it together so the products and the customers so i'm creating the products here then again i'm creating one more customers i'll close all this i'll just copy this html it will help me to do the remaining so inside my products i'll say your uh, products okay and uh, i need a variable called products here which is of type string i'll display some value inside it which is 113870 113870 okay and uh, inside my customers html file i'll display the similar one which is of the previous here i'll display the custom customers for example and here also the customers variable string interpolation I'm just trying to give the same number so that it will be easy for the comparison 2500 2500k okay 
so again for these units and everything there is a separate thing called pipe which will give all those like you can also design the currencies and everything so that's a different scenario called pipe inside angular so we'll not go in much details about it let me just close all of these tabs here call up all this so we are ready with the four component let's see how our output is looking now we are still not able to see this product views and the customers anyone can guess i'll just take a pause here yes why we are not getting because we have created our components but we haven't mentioned where it will get displayed so here i need to display the products uh, products component i want to display here and here i want to display the customers component app customers let's apply the preview here okay yes and we are able to see the outcome so it's uh we are almost near to the output it's all about just adding some extra ui so that we can we can get a better feel here of the output like it's showing some images some icon here and more so that's the, all the CSS stuff we can do, but more or less what we need to understand how the four different components we have combined here and how all are independent of each other. Let's say a new bug came inside these orders. Let's say, for example, inside these orders, if the something is happening and it's showing some wrong output here, always a plus extra five orders it is showing and this is what the new bug is identified by our user and he stated so we just need to repair it so we just need to look inside our orders components we don't need to do anything inside our revenue component product customers and the root component so we just need to go inside our orders component uh, so you can just check inside the html file okay how exactly you're doing a display it's a pretty straightforward you're doing a string interpolation here so something logic may be missing here which the data you're taking from the back end and here you figured out the bug you just need to correct it and your bug is solved. You don't need to look into the thousands of files in your project. So in this way, uh, it will help you to go very narrow to figure out the issues because all are independent of each other, these all components. Of course, there will be some dependency. There are more features inside the Angular called services, dependency injection and many more that we are not discussing in this particular module because that's a separate uh, separate topic to learn completely but hope you understood what's the role of the typescript and what's the role of the decorators and everything inside the typescript components uh, and the angular components over here let's understand typescript in express so we have used the typescript before this in the front end and in one of the technology called angular how it is useful in the front end so now in express so what we do in express we create the restful apis so it supports a wide range of facilities to create the beautiful rest apis with powerful features in that we generally write the code in javascript and express library is also returned in completely javascript but as we have learned there is a community which convert this and give us the type file for that the declaration type file using which we can use the express framework with our typescript as well so in this particular module we'll see how to create a small little backend application which can serve a restful api using javascript initially we'll do with express framework later we'll try to convert the same with the typescript and understand how we can write the same javascript code with express in typescript so let's begin this module with typescript for express let's understand typescript in express so we have used the typescript before this in the front end and in one of the technology called angular how it is useful in the front end so now in express so what we do in express we create the restful apis so it supports a wide range of facilities to create the beautiful rest apis with powerful features in that we generally write the code in javascript and express library is also returned in completely javascript but as we have learned there is a community which convert this and give us the type file for that the declaration type file using which we can use the express framework with our typescript as well 
So in this particular module, we'll see how to create a small little backend application which can serve a RESTful API using JavaScript initially we'll do with Express Framework. Later we'll try to convert the same with the TypeScript and understand how we can write the same JavaScript code with Express in TypeScript. So let's begin this module with TypeScript for Express. A quick note how you can use the code given in the zip file of respective lectures in this particular module. It is exactly the similar way that we have done earlier for the Angular project and before that for the TypeScript project. What is the zip file you will be getting? After unzipping that, you will get this something like this folders. Only the node modules will be missing for you. You just need to perform npm install that you are try, uh, doing for last all the zip files. In the uh, given in the previous lecture so it is exactly similar to the previous one it's time to install the typescript here in this node application which is attached with the express library so along with the typescript we'll also need other libraries from our uh, uh, declaration files for the express as well as the node and the declaration files for the express and the node are available from the definitely type community as we have seen in the advanced module earlier so let me just come back here and uh, let's open a new terminal here or we'll just pause the same so that we can rerun and that will be also good practice here i need to mention i want to do perform the installation using npm and i'm saying hyphen d what exactly this hyphen D? It is stating that I need these dependencies locally just for the development purpose because the TypeScript, the types uh, uh, declaration file for the Express, the declaration file for the node are only required for a developer when he is writing a code. It is not required for the production dependencies. That's the reason we are installing this as a development dependency and what will be the effect of this inside the package.json file that we'll also see after this installation so very first thing we need a latest version of the typescript then we also need the definitely types communities express library and we'll also need the types for the node and uh, we so with this command we are installing the three libraries together so you can again see it's a typescript then we are using the express and then we are installing the node types let me just zoom out a little bit and show you it one more time let's hit the enter here yes so for me the installation was super uh, uh, fast here because already these maximum things are installed in my machine for you it might take little bit time now let's observe package.json file here so here as i told you a new section called added dev dependencies and it is showing the types for express the types for node which we need to use the express li library inside our typescript because that is written in the javascript the same is for node and we are also using TypeScript under our development dependencies and if you see in the production dependencies there is only called express and nodemon nodemon is also not necessary in the dev uh, in the production dependencies by mistakenly we have added here but that's not needed under the production dependencies so let's come back here and it's time to initialize the typescript project that we will see in the next lecture initialize a typescript project so that we can start creating the typescript files so we just need to mention npx here and we want a typescript project and an init out of it yes so it will give you the tsconfig.json file with by default available options here it is by default targeting for the es2016 and many more we don't need to do anything over here as of now very first thing what we need here uh, we need at least one TypeScript file and that's the reason we are getting some issue here for this tsconfig.json file. So not to worry on this if you are getting this error. So make sure there is at least one TypeScript file inside your project. So anyway, we need the index.typescript file where we are going to write all this code inside the TypeScript. So let's do that. index.typescript 
as soon as you are doing that, you should be seeing the error which was coming on the tsconfig.json file is gone. And now we have learned about few configuration inside our tsconfig.json. So we have seen something called as out directory, root directory, from where the TypeScript file should be considered for the execution, from where the types, uh, uh, where the TypeScript, uh, the JavaScript output of your TypeScript code should be emitted, something called as out directory. So we'll start creating some out directory here where the output JavaScript files will be there so that the source and the JavaScript will be at different location so that we can work more smoothly. So let's start creating here the out directory. Let me just figure it out. It will be inside the emit one. Yes, here it is. So this is an out directory. So we'll mention here, it should be inside a dist folder. What we mean by dist, it's a distribution folder. As soon as we are doing that, if we compile, we'll be able to see the distribution folder. But right now we are not compiling any TypeScript file yet. Along with that, one more configuration we'll do for our JavaScript source file for the TS. So for that, there is something called root directory. So inside this root directory, we'll also mention SCR. So what we'll try to uh, start doing now, we'll start creating a folder called SCR. And inside that folder, we will be creating our index.ts file. So let's pull this file inside the source. Super correct. Now the execute the source files will be inside our ts and the output file will be inside the distribution folder. So now what we can do here, we can just say tsc. Uh, we'll, we'll just want to perform one quick compilation so that we can see the distribution file got created. So let me just mention mention here the console. Hi, and we are also having. Okay, so let me just compile it. As soon as we are doing that, we are able to see here the distribution folder got created, and inside that the JavaScript file is there, which is giving a hi, which is mentioned here in the TS file. So now in this particular TS file, we'll try to create our Express application and we'll try to start listening. We'll try to create some RESTful APIs by using the TypeScript with Express here. Let's start writing creation of an Express server inside the TypeScript. So very first thing, we need an Express module which is coming from an express library and uh, we need to create a app with this okay so from now onwards we should start observing the difference the import that we are doing that is different from our javascript the express app we are creating that is also different here how the difference we can observe so if you closely observe here this particular JavaScript file is having an app creation of Express, but it is not giving you any particular type for it. Even I can mention anything other here, for example, like this. But when you do that, like it's not explicitly mentioning anything. So when we are doing any other assignment of data type, it can happen inside your JavaScript. And these data type mismatch and everything we have to remove inside our TypeScript code. So if you go to the TypeScript file here, and if you mention, it is going to follow the express modules, express interface. So it's very clear now, this particular app, it, uh, express app is having some specific data type from our express module. Let's go to the next one and start uh, listening to this server. So app dot, listen okay and uh, we need to keep the port number and an arrow function which will get executed when our server is started so let's log here server started and okay so now we need to first convert our typescript file inside the javascript before running the server because at the end your express server should be running in the javascript so our responsibility is to convert this typescript code to the javascript and then we should run the javascript server i'll just quickly add and uh, 
route here which we just uh, saying just hello and hi app dot using a get method which is serving on the root location and we generally have a request and the response and let me just mention here response dot send this is typescript plus express server okay so if any user hitting at this particular root location of our api url so they will get this response as of now so let's take a step to convert this typescript file to the javascript so we have something called as tsc typescript compiler so as soon as i'm doing that the compilation will succeed and if succeed and if i open the javascript file i should get an equivalent code in the javascript so how this conversion is happening and everything we have seen in detail when we have learned the typescript compilation in the different previous module so it is having a, a very different uh, code here which we not with much is not needed to go in much detail about it so our core focus should be at this typescript file so we have received the output file now our next task is to run this on a server so how we do that let me open a new, one more new terminal and we generally say node mon so our file is inside distribution folder and there it is index.js so it started listening let's yes so we are getting the root uh, the first uh, rest api got called which is on the root level and this is saying typescript plus express server it started so this rest api is getting called so let's say we have updated our server code here and i'm making v2 and let's save this file and if i go back here and keep uh, if i want to see the updated output i'll not be able to see that so I'll just take a pause here. What we can do here, as soon as I, if I save something here, the server code should get updated and updated backend express server should be started. Yes. So the way we have automated using this node mon to continuously start watching the JavaScript file whenever it is getting changed. The same way we can also monitor our TypeScript files. And we have an inbuilt facility with our TypeScript compiler with the flag hyphen hyphen watch. So whenever we are changing anything inside our TypeScript file, so it is getting recompiled and it will it is giving you updated JavaScript file. Whenever your JavaScript file is changed with our one more uh, uh, terminal running due to this node mon, the server is getting restarted with updated code. And if I go now and refresh the site, it will give me the V3. Let's come back here, make the v4. It is generating the JavaScript file and the JavaScript due to the node mod, the server is getting restarted with the updated code. We should get v4 here. So this is how we have seen how to set up the TypeScript inside our Express application and how to use the node man also in coordination with each other. And we have seen the conversion of the JavaScript code inside the TypeScript. There are one more last option I would like to highlight here. Here we have seen the data type for that is very much fixed at line number three. At, th at this particular place also line number five for your request and response, the data type is fixed that is the request and the response. We can even explicitly mention that if you want to do that. So let's say here from the express module, I want to use the request here and from the express module, I want to use the response here. So this is the way whatever the technology we have learned called TypeScript should be applied in different framework at a different level whenever it is used. Hope you have enjoyed the course and learned TypeScript. Very firstly, we understood why TypeScript is needed. Then we slowly started with basics and understanding the compilation behavior with more concepts. We learned arrays, tuples, objects, unions, enums, alices, utility types, and many more. We have also seen the object-oriented programming with classes, interfaces, generics, and the decorators. We seen advanced compilation behavior as well by changing the variety of different options from tsconfig.json file to understand how the compilation works in a more type-strict fashion. 
we had a very uh, special module for the advanced topics where we understood the topics which are very rarely covered on the internet. We also had a two special integrations. One is from the front end Angular and one is from the back end Express. Now you should be confident to use TypeScript in your next project. Please leave your important feedback here for this course as a review which will help me to understand about this course quality and keep improving it. It will also help other students to understand about this course. I wish you a great success with TypeScript and have an exciting programming journey ahead.